Manned Spacecraft Center Director, Dr. Christopher C. Kraft, Jr. Just came back into the control center after having attended a meeting by management people in one of the back rooms, and the situation is go for landing. We, to reaffirm, we do have a go for landing in revolution number 16. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, at 91 hours, uh, 24 minutes into the mission. Uh, we're standing by now, uh, waiting a wake-up call by Capcom uh, Don Peterson to the crew of Apollo 16. We show Apollo 16 uh, presently with an apolloon of uh, 58.9 nautical miles and a paralloon of 10.4 nautical miles. Apollo 16, Houston. Apollo 16, Houston. How are you down there this morning, Houston? Just fine. How are you, 16? Charging hard. Uh, Roger. Got about uh, three short items and assembly status, if you're ready. Okay, can we uh, hold off on assembly status and I'll copy your three short items. Roger. Okay, the first one is, uh, based on our evaluation, your uh, potassium levels are running a little low, and we'd like to recommend that you drink some orange juice this morning. Also, you've uh, got a long day ahead of you, so we'd like to recommend that you eat a bit more food. The second item is terminate battery Bravo charge. The third item is terminate the jet on monitor. Okay, Don. Okay, Don, uh, number one, I understand your comment about the potassium low and all that jazz. We just uh, were finishing up breakfast, and I think we've eaten almost everything that, that uh, the Lemmys have to eat. And uh, we, uh, we've been drinking all the drinks every day. And if we get a chance, well, we'll try to get, get some more, get another juice bag out. We will terminate the battery B charge and terminate the jet monitor and I understand the way to do the jet monitor is I'll go to uh, I'll go to uh, the SCS mode and key of Earth 37 now 20 and then verify that uh, now 26 is all zeros again and I can go back to P20, is that correct? Stand by. There's no requirement to go to SCS 16. Okay, I can just call 3720 without getting any firings. So Apollo Control Houston, uh, 91 hours, uh, 30 minutes. That's uh, Ken Mattingly aboard Apollo 16, who has uh, been speaking with Capcom Don Peterson here in Mission Control. Uh, 16, uh, just to be sure we're talking the same thing, uh, to, to uh, kill the jet on monitor, we want to do a verb 37 enter, 30 enter, a verb 37 enter, 20 enter, and zero the noun 26. Don, I can't get to the updates book where that's written down. Would you read it to me slowly and I'll do that uh, terminate right now? Okay, it's verb 37 enter, 30 enter, verb 37 enter, 20 enter, zero the noun 26. And 16, you're about one minute to LOS and you're looking good. Okay, and we've, we're taking uh, an extra orange uh, with potassium this morning. Roger. Houston uh, 16, uh, take a look at the bow bed uh, off of me and see how it looks over. Okay. I got it uh, reset from yesterday. Ken still looks a little loose. Well, it's not loose. Uh, we'll have to take a better look at it next time around, Ken. Okay, this is John, and uh, the sensors are fixed. We got confusion down here on who we're monitoring, John. Uh, John, the lead we're concerned with is the sternal lead, the one on your breastbone. You might jiggle it a little bit. Hey, we're doing that. It sure looks like it's all tight. Okay. Uh, John, you might try putting new sponges on that uh, lead. Okay, I did that last night. Okay, we'll pick you up next rev and talk about it. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 91 hours, uh, 37 minutes into the mission. Uh, we've had uh, loss of a signal with Apollo 16. Uh, 
The uh, last conversation uh, aboard the spacecraft was John Young uh, uh, checking uh, on his biomedical sensors. We're at uh, 91 hours uh, 37 minutes into the mission, and this is Apollo Control Houston. This is Apollo Control at 92 hours 15 minutes, ground elapsed time, and some 13 minutes 12 seconds until Apollo 16 reappears from behind the moon in this 10th lunar orbit. Jerry Griffin's goal team of flight controllers settled in for the day's activities leading up to powered descent and lunar landing. The offgoing uh, shift of flight controllers have uh, practically all left the room having debriefed their replacements. There will not be a change of shift briefing. Repeat, will not be a change of shift briefing. And as much as the preceding shift was primarily a sleep shift. Apollo 16 uh, still in a 59 by 10.6 nautical mile lunar orbit. Current velocity orbital velocity 5,355 feet per second and current altitude at this point in the orbit 44.8 nautical miles 11 minutes 57 seconds to Apollo 16 acquisition at 92.16 this is Apollo Control this is Apollo Control 92 hours 27 minutes into the mission of Apollo 16. Less than a minute away from uh, Apollo 16's reappearance around the eastern limb of the moon on lunar orbit number 10. On this next front side pass, the uh, main concern of the crew will be transferring quite a few of the pieces of gear and equipment into the lunar module, getting the lunar module prepared for the descent and landing at the Descartes landing site. Six minutes away. We may be a few moments late uh, getting acquisition because of the uh, apparent uh, position of the high gain antenna as seen on the ground by the communications officer. We're waiting for confirmation of Acquisition of signal by the tracking network. Flight Director Jerry Griffin, Griffin is uh, polling all of his flight controllers on the current status and preparation for uh, the landing phase. Getting all the uh, details worked out. Any uh, minor problems, the different positions, console positions might have. Standing by. Hello, Jim. Morning. Uh, we're in the process of a little seat donning here, and uh, got one problem. I went to retract the mass spectrometer, and the uh, gamma ray boom came in fine, but the mass spectrometer boom uh, indicates uh, barber pole and has stayed barber pole in about 10 minutes. I went ahead and enabled the jets, and I'd like you to take a look at the uh, at the um, telemetry talk back on the boom and see if you can suggest something for me to do. Okay, it we copy it. It's a barber pole. It's a total barber pole. Here we go. We copy, Ken. Okay. Uh, 16, this is Houston. Uh, we're wondering if you've gone through the, the malfunction procedure and for that boom retraction on page 1-24 of the system's handbook. Well, I looked and didn't find when it was appropriate. Okay, I guess you're right, Ken. We're pretty busy, as you know, Jim, and so uh, I'd really appreciate it if you could talk me through whatever steps you want. Okay, I understand. Uh, 16, this Houston, we'd like you to put the mass spec boom switch to the off position. That's if it's not there already. Yeah, okay, I'll do that, and when I do, it goes to... Uh, Then it goes to gray. That's permanent. 
Uh, 16, this is Houston. We had understood that you had uh, activated all your RCS jets. We show you're still in the Sin Bay configuration. Okay, thank you. I had switches with the circuit breakers I went up. Roger. 16, this is Houston. You go uh, normal acquisition procedures on the S band. What did you want me to do with that hiking? We wanted you to go through normal acquisition procedures. 16, will you go uh, auto on the high gain? You have it? Thank you. Uh, six. Never mind. Okay, 16, this is Houston. We have Simbay data now. Will you go back to retract on the, uh, on the boom switch? Okay. You have retract, Jim? Roger. 16, this is Houston. Will you check the talk back on that boom? Again, tell us whether it's a full barber pole or a partial. It's the same that's been, Jim. It's a barber pole. Full. Okay, we copy a full barber pole. We show it uh, partially retracted within acceptable limits. Uh, what do you mean partially retracted? Does that mean your telemetry point has sensed uh, closure? That's affirmative. Okay, then I'll put it back into the off position. Stand by, Ken. I think we like want it to close. retract. Okay, I'll leave it to retract. Okay, you can put the uh, retract switch back to the off position. Okay, retract is off. Right here. If you can watch that thing on telemetry, I can extend it uh, enough to clear it and then try and retract again. Okay, let's. Uh, we're within limits, Ken. Let's hold what we have. Okay. Okay, Jim, on the uh, docking latch number 10, I got some observations if you're ready. Roger, we're ready, Ken. Go ahead. Okay, when I look in under the limb umbilical connector cover, uh, the roller cam looks normal, and uh, everything I can see from that side looks correct. When I look under the uh, cover on the right side, that's the uh, probe connector cover. I look at the uh, bungee in the uh, the little uh, arm that sticks out uh, from the bottom of the cam when I compare it to another latch. It doesn't stick out uh, as far. In fact, the back of this part, this inner piece of the bell crank, has a part number on it, and it's uh, it's flush, whereas on the others it sticks out and shows the uh, pin. So it looks like it hasn't uh, come over center. Sorry, I don't have the right part nomenclature. Roger, we got, we got a docking latch on the table there somewhere. You can see what I'm looking at. Uh, Ken, this is Houston. Can you see anything that might uh, be obstructing or interfering with that cam action? No, sir, I can't. Okay. Okay, 16, this is Houston. If you go to poo and accept, we'll... Uh, thank you. Okay, just accept. You're there. Okay, 16, this is Houston. You go back to block. 16, this is Houston. If you copy. Yeah, you got it. Roger. Houston, we just passed over the good landing site, and you can see the whole area stands up very nicely, just like the model. Very good, Ken. Thank you. Houston, from my present position, I can't be sure exactly where I am because I just looked out the window again, but we passed over a large crater, and it has three little domes in the bottom of it with craters in the top of them that look uh, like very subtle cinder cones. I'll try to mark that guy on the way back. It's one of a cluster of uh, two large ones with several smaller ones. Roger, we copy, Ken. 16, this is uh, Houston. Will you uh, give us another reading on that docking tunnel index when you have an opportunity? Yeah, it's still the same thing. Minus 3.5. Roger, minus 3.5. Hey, firm. Uh, 16, this is Houston. Uh, Houston will we assume the... Uh, Go ahead, 16. Okay, uh, John and Charlie got their suits on and uh, they're in the limb. Is there any reason they shouldn't go ahead and power up and get some cooling? Stand by. Okay, let's uh, proceed, Ken. Okay, we'll proceed. This is Apollo Control. Apollo 16 Commander John Young and Lunar Module Pilot Charlie Duke are running almost 40 minutes ahead of the flight plan. And as much as they've already donned their pressure suits and are in the Lunar Module, preparing to power it up 
Flight plan calls for transfer. Seven. Roger. And Ken, this is Houston. The reason for that undervoltage last night was that uh, all the heaters just happened to come on at that particular time. Uh, thank you again, Jim. We were cycling a relief valve at the time. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Did you get my call on the uh, Lem Power at 9307? Sure did, 9307. This is Apollo Control, some 25 minutes remaining now in this front side pass in the 10th lunar orbit of Apollo 16. Before the still docked Orion and Casper go around the corner on the western limb of the moon at 9309, still live on the 10th lunar orbit. This is Apollo Control. Uh, 16, uh, this is Houston. Uh, S-band Ox, SCI, switch to off. Over. That's off. Roger. Do you think can I give you some uh, target angles or did you copy them? Uh, we have them, Ken. Okay, and we're in the maneuver. Roger. This is Apollo Control. The maneuver referred to just then by Ken Mattingly aboard the command module. Casper was the maneuver to the undocking attitude, which has a roll of zero, pitch 104, and yaw of zero. Just about on time as called for in the flight plan. Some 14 minutes and 8 seconds until loss of signal. This is Apollo Control at 9320. Uh, Ken, this is Houston. Uh our plan on the mass spec boom is to leave it uh, where it is. And we're going to um, ask uh, John and Charlie to check it uh, after undocking for its uh, requisition. OK. And when I was trying to talk to you before, I just wanted to give you the words on that under voltage, which uh, you all had last night. The reason for that was uh, the fact that all the heaters came on at the same time. Over. Okay, I guess maybe I jumped the gun, but it seemed to me like that that master alarm came on instantly when I hit that switch. And it uh, seemed like the only proof thing to do was to undo what I just did. I'm glad to hear that, though. Thank you. And Ken, if you're uh, up a few minutes there, I could give you a, a flight plan update, a very short one. Could, could you hold it? I'm uh, in the middle of a suit dining and canister change. Okay. This is Apollo Control. We have confirmation that the communication system aboard the lunar module is activated. We're beginning to get data out of the limb. Ryan, select the aft antenna. Okay, uh, Jim, you got it. Very good. We're reading you loud and clear. And you're really beautiful, too. We are on page 3676. Uh, we'd have been a little bit further along, but we had trouble with John there for today. Looks like it's a first in the night.
Casper, this is Houston. How do you read? This is Apollo Control. Five minutes away from loss of signal as Apollo 16 passes behind the moon. Lunar module cabin now uh, showing at 5.02 pounds per square inch pressure. Suit pressure 4.98 for both men. Cabin temperature 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Charlie. 
Okay, uh, while uh, guidance is, uh, let me give you some angle. We had a verbal 6 down 20 that was done at 9 4 2 0 2 0. The limb angles were plus 2 9 4 6 5, plus 2 8 9 9 6, plus 3 5 5 0 2. Roger, we copy. I copied the LEM is plus 29465 plus 289906 plus 35502. Over. Uh, that's affirmative. The command module are plus 00269 plus 10931 plus 00472. Over. Roger, I copied plus 00269 plus 10931 plus 00470. Over. Uh, that's firm. Uh, it sounds like we got good calm on uh, primary SPN TR and secondary power amp. I'm going secondary uh, SPN TR and primary power amp. Over. Roger, right we're standing by. Okay. Thank you for my switch here, Joe. Jasper, this is Houston. We want narrow on the S-band.
Five, that's what I got. Minus five, four, four, one, two. Good read that. Uh, Houston, Orion. Go ahead, Orion. Okay, I can't uh, seem to get the yaw out of the coast position, minus 12 on the indicator. And I cannot hear it drive uh, when I move the dial. Just like the uh, in pitch, I can hear it drive and the needle follows over. Okay, I, we'll read you, Charlie. We want you to go through a little procedure here to uh, essentially get you back to start position. We want you to go to SLU on the S-band. Check both S-band circuit breakers on 11 and 16. Select uh, pitch of minus 7.5 and yaw of minus 12. Wait 30 seconds and then go uh, to an acquisition and we'll have some angles for you. Okay, uh, that's where we are. Casper, this Houston, go to accept. And Orion, the uh, the angles for your uh, S-band are pitch of 9-9 and yaw of 1-6. Copy 9-9 uh, and 1-6. And Casper, this Houston, I have a bit of bias for you whenever you're ready to copy. Okay, on the Pippa bias, address 1454, data 03521, address 1456, data 76274, over. Okay, on the 1456, couldn't hear your readback, Ken, the data is 76274. Sounded like a good readback. And Casper, this is uh, Houston with a tap load for you whenever you're ready. Can I do the P-52 when I get into darkness, over? 
stand by. Okay, we're preparing a rest mat for you now, John, that you have to put in manually, and you'll be able to proceed. Roger. Okay, Orion, this is Houston. I have uh, a P-27 for you. One for rest mat, and the other is your state vector. Over. Okay, go ahead. Stand by one. Ryan, we would like you to go back to SLU and place the antenna at the stowed position, minus 75 and, and minus 12, and just leave it there. Tell him, okay, we got it. Okay, and Charlie, if you're ready to copy, I have this P-27 update for the refs, Matt, and state vector for you. I'm ready to copy. Okay, index is 2-4. Zero one seven three one one two five six zero two two six two four six six three one five seven five five four six seven one zero zero one four seven five two six zero two zero four four zero four zero two zero. Seven zero one six four seven three seven five three one five six five one three zero six five one six four two three three six four four seven one six five six four seven six three four three three. Seven four zero two one seven six zero six three. Over. Okay, read back. Index two four. Index is two four zero one seven three one one two five six zero two two six two four. Six six three one five seven five five four six er seven one zero zero one four seven five or two six zero two zero four four zero four zero two zero seven zero one six four seven three seven five three one five six five one three zero six five one six four two three three. Six four four seven one six five six four seven six three four three three seven four zero two one seven six zero six three. Hey, that's a good read back. I have your uh, state vector for you when you're ready. Roger, go. Okay, if you're ready, Charlie, on the state vector. Index two one. Zero one five zero one seven 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 five seven 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 six five seven six zero two zero zero three zero one three seven four five zero 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 one five five two zero six two one Two zero one 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 three one four five zero 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 six six two one seven two six zero seven six zero zero four five five two two six zero four zero seven six 
17120. Over. Okay. The state vector 21 index 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 Houston, I have a set pad whenever you're all ready. Okay, wait, what? Ryan, this is Houston with another procedure for the S-Band. Roger. Roger, we want you to open the S-Band antenna circuit breaker on panel 11. Wait one minute and then try uh, acquisition again. Roger. After that one minute, you'd close the circuit breaker and try an acquisition. Roger. Roger, you should enter it just as it's uh, head up on the pad. Understand. Verb 71, then a 24 enter, then a 01731 enter, and go on. That should be correct. Okay. Go ahead. What do you know? 
Okay, Ryan, this is Houston. Uh, we're looking at uh, page 1-26 in the GNN Dictionary to review the data. Roger. So we... Okay. Now, we got one that's wrong. Yeah. Yeah, we heard that. And we believe it's uh, number 13. We concur, Jim. Houston, line 11 should be 02044. Over. Okay, that's what it is. Here you okay. go. Zero's good. 4020. Yeah. Now this one's wrong. Okay. Fix it. Okay. Low component identifier. Okay, that's 1-3. One, 1-3. Three. One, three. Yeah. I think it's now, uh, 
Okay, Jim, on a checklist, when it says load component identifier, we got uh, 13 is wrong. What do we load in there? A 1, 3, enter. Ryan, this is Houston. We'd like you to close that circuit breaker and try an acquisition on the uh, steerable. Okay, it worked. Okay, Jim, the yaw is still not working. I understand the yaw is still not working. It's affirmative. Now. Glad you understand you're pressurizing RCS. Okay, Houston, the RCS press looks good. Okay, Houston, press looks good. RCS pressure is creeping up on system A. Yeah, it looks all right here. Go ahead, Jasper. Uh, Roger, uh, we're not going there yet. I'll tell you when. Ryan, this is Houston. Will you read us System A manifold pressure? Ryan, this is Houston. Will you read us System A manifold pressure? Roger. System A uh, manifold pressure is uh, 195. Copy 195. 190, that is. 190. Make it 190. Roger, 190. Okay, Charlie. Practice this, did you? Yeah. Okay, we got it. 
Yeah. Okay, Ryan, this is Houston. Looks like RCS manifold pressure on A is creeping up again. That's why we're holding it. Okay, we, uh, it does look like it's risen five pounds. Okay, Kim, stay at this dead man. We'll do a, uh, P-52 here.
at an orbit measuring 10.3 by 58.9 nautical miles. And at uh, 95.32 ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control at 95 hours, 45 minutes, ground elapsed time. Some 31 minutes away from acquisition of Apollo 16 as it uh, starts around the front side of the moon on orbit number 12. To summarize the apparent problem with the lunar module steerable antenna, if by the time of power descent and landing the problem has not sorted itself out and the antenna is indeed out of commission, right now it appears that the uh, crew cannot get the antenna to to rotate in the yaw movement. It will be possible uh, for all data and voice, high bit rate data, to be relayed to Earth through the Omni antennas, starting with revolution number 13, which is the landing revolution. The 210-foot antenna in Goldstone, California, will be the prime site. And there's no apparent concern here in, in mission control with uh, the uh, potential loss of the steerable antenna. Some mention has been made of the fact that uh, the meters that indicate antenna position sometimes fail or hang in the one indication when actually the antenna is properly rotating. But over the next two revolutions, uh, this situation should sort itself out. At any rate, loss of the antenna does not mean that the landing will be aborted. We are still in a go situation. And at uh, next acquisition, the two spacecraft, Casper and Orion, will have been separated by uh, or some six minutes prior to acquisition. 28 minutes now until acquisition of signal from Casper and Orion. At 95.48, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 96 hours, 15 minutes. About 50 seconds now away from acquisition of signal with Orion and Casper coming around from the back side of the moon separately this time. Standing by for confirmation from the network controller that uh, the tracking station does have data and downlink from the two spacecraft. There will be uh, some troubleshooting run this rev on the uh, steerable antenna on Orion and a further check out of the uh, discrepancy in regulator pressures on the lunar module reaction control system, system uh, thrusters. We have AOS confirmation from network controller. Let's uh, come up on the air ground circuit to monitor the first words. Ryan, this is Houston, how do you read? Roger, 5-5-M, and we're sailing free. Roger. Okay, uh, Jim, it was 
was a little rush, but we got it done. Uh, the only thing got bad is I got a hat full of orange juice. Okay, we copy, and we'd like you to go through uh, another procedure here to get the S-band locked up if you're uh, waiting to take two notes. you to put the uh, steerable at pitch minus 7.5 and yaw of minus 12, in other words, the stowed position. Go track mode slew, wait 30 seconds, and then go pitch of plus 6.3, yaw of minus 3.2, and antenna S-band to slew and proceed with normal acquisition. Okay, FDI is roll zero zero zero. 
pitch. Zero five three. And yaw zero zero zero. And the steerable angles. Pitch plus two six. Yaw minus twelve. Over. Can we now do 
you much better. And we read you much better. Okay, it worked that time, Jim. We got a 4.2 signal strength, and the steerable is working. Uh, I'm in track mode auto. Very good. I have some words for you on the RCS. Very good. I have some words for you on the RCS. Okay, go ahead. Okay, let's go normal configuration on your RCS, and then we want you to uh, transfer 3% more out of system A, as we see the pressure going up on A. As we see the pressure going up 
Okay, transferring. And the caution, of course, uh, not more than 180 on the apps. And the caution, of course, uh, not more than 180 on the apps. Okay, the Atlantic radar H dot is only reading minus 17 right now. The 8000 works okay. Uh, Ryan, will you give us high bit rate, please? Yeah, looks good. Ryan, will you give us high bit rate, please? You got high bit rate, Bowman is left. Roger. Uh, Jim, could we try a pitch maneuver back to the uh, landing site? Uh, Viewing attitude, so we'll see if this thing tracks. Stand by one. Okay, just hold it one. We want to get our uplinks in, and then you can try that maneuver. Okay. Okay, Ryan, let's go poo and data, and we'll send you an uplink. Okay, you've got poo and data. Roger. Okay, Houston, the landing radar test is not working properly. Okay, what's uh, the problem, John? Well, it's not reading the right numbers in the, in the altitude rate, and it's not reading the right numbers in verb 63. The altitude transmitter is 3.2, and the velocity transmitter, velocity transmitter is 3.7. And okay, uh, Jim, the eggs is loaded with the uh, data card. Go ahead. Okay, we want you to select uh, normal voice. Eggs is loaded with the with the data card numbers. Over. Roger, I copy, Charlie. Ryan, this is Houston. Are you also uh, showing bad data on the tape meter for the landing radar? That's a permanent. Roger. The H altitude was reading right at 8,000, but the velocity was only reading 15. I'll run it again. Roger. Can I run it while B-27 is in progress? Stand by on that one. Yeah, I'm sure I can. Hold off on that landing radar check until after the, uh, the uplink. Okay. We'll go off and uh, pull the circuit breaker. Uh, Jim, we'd like to start a pitch back down uh, so we could see the landing site. Stand by. We're still getting the uplink. And Orion, this is Houston. Uh, I have the uh, abort pads whenever you're all ready. Okay, uh, stand by. Okay, go ahead. Okay, beginning uh, no PDI plus 12. Zero, 09847. All zeros. Plus zero, 01023. Zero, Plus all zeros, minus zero zero five zero 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 one three eight zero, plus zero zero one one zero zero one one three nine zero three five, all zeros two seven three five nine two seven zero, plus zero one zero two six, plus all zeros, minus zero zero four nine four. 09935 all zeros 10122 throttle profile 10 percent for 26 seconds full throttle for remainder lem weight 36673 over okay uh, Jim uh, that was a little bit too fast but I think I got it all uh, zero nine or eight four seven zero 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 plus zero one zero two three plus all balls minus zero zero five zero 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 one three eight zero plus zero zero one one zero zero one one three nine zero three five all balls two seven three five nine two seven zero zero one two seven six zero plus all balls minus zero zero four nine or four zero nine or nine three five all balls one zero one two two one five zero zero uh, limb, uh, that the uh, throttle profile is 10% for 26 seconds in full throttle. Limb weight 36673. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, is good read back. Let me just confirm the noun 86 delta VX is plus 01026, and we're finished with your computer. Okay, and we need uh, need mod okay, down for verb 74. Okay, and I'm going to land the radar check again. 
You have it. Okay, read that again, uh, Jim, the, the Delta VX. Uh, Delta VX, 986, is plus 01026. And, Charlie, I'm ready on the, the PDI pad. Okay, I was wrong on that. Uh, I got it now, 01026. Okay, and you ready for PDI? Go ahead with the PDI pad. Okay, India. Zero, speak. Zero 098-35-0468-1104 plus 00026-002-114-340 plus 56907. PDI Early, Juliet. One zero one two two one five zero zero kilo one zero three two one all zeros over Roger Jim could we start a pitch attitude down to see the landing site Are you done with our E mod Jim? We're finished with the EMOD dump. We would just soon get all these pads up, and we're not concerned about the landing site down here. Okay. I uh, didn't think you were. Okay, fine. I'm, I'm down through Kilo, and I'll read back starting in India. 0908-350468-1104 plus 00026-002-114-340 plus 56-997-101. Two two one five zero zero one zero three two one zero 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 over. Okay, that's a good read back, and I have uh, T two and T three for you. Go ahead. Okay, T two Lima zero nine eight five nine two nine zero three one zero five one nine four five zero zero T two at PDI plus. Two four plus two five and T three nectar one zero zero four two four two eight six over. Orion, will you verify auto on the steerable? It is an auto. Right here. Okay, and reading back starting with Lima. Zero nine or eight, five nine or two nine or zero three, one zero five, one nine or four five zero zero. November one zero zero four two four two eight six. Go ahead with the next one over. Okay, uh, we're standing by for the uh, the landing radar check out, John. And of course, Charlie, you got that T two at PDI at uh, two four plus two five, and I have an eggs K factor for you. Okay, go ahead with the eggs. Okay, uh, zero, 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 nine, zero, all zeros, zero, zero, one, 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 over. Okay, copy, uh, nine, nine, zero, 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 one, one, one. Good read back. Okay, okay, there's the data. It's reading all right in dot, but, uh, it's changing data in the in the next two registers. Buddy, we're looking at it down here. And the tape meter is now and the tape meter is now reading 480 opening, and uh, the output meter, which the first time I did it, read 8,000. It's now read zero. Okay, Ryan, let's go a little bit right, and we're losing the steerable. Roger. Uh, Jim, I don't think it's tracking in, uh, y'all. Uh, Ryan, we'll get back to you on the landing radar. Roger. And uh, Ryan, this the is Houston, just a reminder on the load 405 and 406 to plus zero. Roger. And we're ready for high bit rate. Okay, you have it. Roger. Okay, I'll terminate the landing radar test. That's okay with y'all. Roger. 
That's negative. Uh, Houston wants them to stay locked on right now. Ryan, this is Houston. I have a circuit pad if you're ready to copy. Stand by. Go ahead. Okay, ignition at uh, 09740-1716. Now 81s plus 00681 minus all zeros minus 00580. Over. Right, copy. Uh, 09740-1716. Plus zero zero six eight one minus all balls minus zero zero five eight zero. Good read back. Okay, we'll go ahead and go to do the uh, IMU final line right now. If that's okay with you, Houston. Roger, we're standing by, John. Okay, Charlie. Uh, will you uh, in four oh four? Will you uh, put uh, minus one two three four five? Roger. Okay, Houston, when we do this attitude maneuver for the B-52, we're going to lose that game. Stand by. Is that I all think right? we're all prepared for it. Okay. Okay, you can go ahead and maneuver, John, and we want okay, you to use RCS System A. Okay. Okay, we're using System A. Copied. Uh, I'm torquing angles minus zero six zero plus point one three nine and minus zero point zero one eight at ninety six fifty eight forty. That's Raj. And you go normal voice. Uh, the ag checkout has gone well. Okay.
Only thing we haven't done is rendezvous radar check out. We'll get to that as soon as Kent gets through with his bird. Right here, we're uh, recommending that rendezvous radar check out on the back side. And uh, landing radar checkouts one All right, we're going to go fine. through now. Okay, we're going now. Okay, it's up and left like it's supposed to be. Okay, uh, John, when you get to the noun 66 and 67 values, we want you to read us the, uh, the tape meter values of uh, H and H dot. Okay, it's right on, Houston. It's 8,480 off the H dot. Ready, we copy. Okay, minus 495 plus 1860 plus 1331, right on, and the, and the tape reader is up and left, and it's reading 8,480. I think it was locked on the ground or something when we came over that low pass due to our communication angle. That may be wrong, but that, you know, it was sure acting funny. Okay, it's looking good to us now. Okay, we've got 3-2 on the altitude transmitter and 3 Four five on a velocity transmitter. Make it three five five. Okay, we copy. Hey, uh, Jim, uh, on those drink bags, uh, say it's pretty hard to see things when you got a helmet full of orange juice and zero gravity, something like that orange juice. Hey, you got to drink fast. You really do. Okay, acquisition on the next web. And Jim, we had to turn on our window heaters for about uh, 10 minutes per side to clear up the windows uh, right at, right before undocking. Are right, we copy? We've been using the uh, we've been using the LCG pump to keep cool in here, and it's really neat. Copy. We've been needing something to keep cool, I'll tell you. Yeah, we understand completely. Hi, Jim, uh, your uplink uh, voice is uh, just beautiful uh, in every antenna we got. Over. Okay, that's a, a good data point. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the downlink is very, very noisy. Yeah, I wonder what happened uh, on the the uh, com checks we did at 55 hours. Of course, it was closer, but it was uh, real good then. I thought. Okay, we understand. It's just a completely different situation, Charlie. Okay. But uh, your voice is uh, just crystal clear right now. Roger. Uh, Ryan, uh, this is Houston with some trajectory information for you. Go ahead. Roger, it uh, looks like you'll be coming in about 10,000 feet high at PDI, John, which will be about three to four seconds of hover time, and you'll be uh, 17,000 feet Understand. south. Okay, does that mean we're going to be uh, pitch over, we'll be steering from south to north? That's affirmative. And, okay, so at pitch over, we'll be, uh, you'll be targeting us right into the target, but we'll be steering from south to north. Is that based on Ken's tracking? No, that's not negative on that one. But uh, you'll probably be coming straight in by the time you get down okay. to uh, pitch over. Okay, thank you. How did landmark track it turn out? Stand by. Okay, the landmark tracking looked very good, John. Okay. Uh, Ryan, will you give us your ED bat readout, please? Same as always, 37 volts. Very good. Uh, Jim, is the uh, guidance going to have any general drift for us? Stand by. Okay, no update on that, and it looks like your uh, 
the attitude for PDI is very close to the one that we would like for uh, the, S, the steerable. So we'll try that uh, when you come around at uh, AOS. Okay. Okay. And uh, Jim, on this P-52, it, uh, that radar uh, has, was, has drifted up into the field of view, uh, but uh, is no sweat just moving it down and flew. Okay, we copy. And one other thing that uh, when we put those state vectors in there, I guess we didn't have any limb vector in there, and the computer activity light stayed on all the time. I finally figured out what it was and did a burp 66, got rid of it. Okay, we concur. I think I think that's what it was. Everybody's nodding their head down here. Affirmative. Uh, Houston uh, 16, what uh, appears to be the problem with System A? Is it a rig problem or what? Yes, uh, that's affirmative, Charlie, a rig problem. Okay, well, we have, uh, if we use up uh, fuel, just System A for descent is what you want us to do? Stand by. We'll give you a RCS configuration for PDI when you all come around the corner. Okay, well, we'll be back. And I'd like somebody to think about this high uh, apps pressure we have uh, uh, during the lunar stay. Over. Okay, uh, we're looking at that one too, John. Okay, we are noticing an increase in the, uh, the RCS pressure there, but uh, we have enough foliage volume now to uh, get uh, all the uh, propellant out. Understand. Thank you. Ryan, this is Houston. Have you yeah. ever noticed if any we're change on in your yaw meter? Uh, Jim, it's uh, stuck on minus 12. Okay, and go ahead, John. I think that uh, if we were on hot mic when we were talking to each other, I want to apologize right now. It's probably pretty interesting. Probably not if the comm was as bad as you said it was. It, it was good enough for us to understand you. We're afraid of that. Okay, Orion, if you see that reg pressure creeping up, uh, you could do a small maneuver which would uh, help the situation. Understand. We'll do that. Uh, we'll do a VR-49 to the Axe-Cal altitude, Jim. Okay. And Orion, we're coming up on about two minutes to LOS. Roger, two minutes to LOS. See you around for PDI. Ryan, this is Houston. For your information, the uh, the burst disc pressure is uh, 215 to 220, the RCS. Roger, understand. Uh, Jim, is it both systems you see climbing? It's just system A. It's system A, right. Yeah, Jim, I saw the landing side as we passed over. We're not going to have any trouble recognizing it from the rays. The rays stand out beautifully. Very good. Glad to hear it. This is Apollo Control. And both spacecraft have passed behind the moon nearing the end of the 12th lunar orbit. During this past rather interesting frontside pass, Several nagging problems have cropped up or have been uh, carried over from the preceding revolution. One concerns the landing radar, which in its uh, self-test mode gave some spurious readouts, and the readouts never agreeing with what the uh, test should be. Later on in repetition of the landing radar self-test, the... Uh, numbers on the onboard display came out as they should. John Young speculated that perhaps because of the low altitude at the time of the first attempt at the landing radar self-test, they were getting some ground reflections from the lunar surface, which 
cause the uh, self-test to be to be invalid. The self-test of the rendezvous radar has been postponed until the upcoming backside pass prior to uh, acquisition on Rev 13. Steerable antenna situation is still coming in and out as the uh, steerable antenna appears to be locked in a stowed position. However, with the spacecraft attitude uh, oriented such that the antenna faces the Earth, we've had fairly good communications uh, during the better part of this front side pass. The 210-foot dish at Goldstone will acquire the spacecraft at the start of Rev 13. And even if the uh, steerable antenna is completely inoperative, all high bit rate data, uh, communications, uh, voice, everything normally carried by the steerable antenna through the 85-foot dishes uh, will be available on the ground. The uh, Lunar Module Reaction Control System regulator situation. The crew is still running through some procedures to manage the two systems A and B of the reaction control system aboard the Lunar Module to balance the regulator pressures for the propellants. System A appears to uh, creep upward slightly, periodically. And by opening the cross-feed valve and uh, venting some of the propellant into the uh, ascent tanks, it appears that the uh, situation will stabilize. The descent propulsion system throttle check and the descent propulsion system pressurization routines were carried out completely normally earlier in Revolution 12. Ken Mattingly, meanwhile, was given a go to circularize with the command module Casper. Ignition time for this burn is 97 hours, 40 minutes, 17 seconds. It will be a service propulsion system burn, 99.6 feet per second, which will circularize at about 51.8 by 68.2. This is slightly elliptical, but uh, because of the perturbations of lunar orbit, the orbit of the command module should be almost circular at the time of rendezvous. Acquisition 43 minutes 23 seconds from now as both spacecraft come around the front side. None of the uh, problems mentioned with the RCA uh, reaction control system regulators or the steerable antenna preclude the lunar landing. Even if the S band, uh, steerable S-band antenna is completely inoperative. We still go for landing using the Omni antennas through the Goldstone 210-foot dish. 42 minutes, 36 seconds away from acquisition on the uh, PDI or landing orbit. At 97.28 ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 98 hours, 5 minutes, ground elapsed time into the mission of Apollo 16. 3 minutes and 50 seconds to acquisition of signal as the two spacecraft come around the moon on the 13th lunar revolution. Some 29 minutes, 24 seconds until ignition for the landing phase. Ignition time for PDI, or Power Descent Initiate, is 98.35.04. The descent engine will burn for approximately 12 minutes and 53 seconds, according to the nominal plan. For a total 
velocity change from orbital velocity all the way down to zero or landing at the lunar surface of 6,698 feet per second. The lunar module Orion will slim down at a rate that would make a calorie counter envious for at the start of PDI the Orion will weigh some 18 tons by landing she'll only weigh 9 tons all of this weight loss of course is propellant during the descent the lunar module pilot will be calling out numbers that the computer display has uh, displayed for him. He will call them out to the commander. They, both men will be in what is called a vox mode or voice actuated communication so that those on the ground can hear their conversation. The lunar module pilot will call out these numbers for the angle at which the commander can see the landing site on a grid on his window called the landing point designator. During the final descent phase of the uh, touchdown, the uh, lunar module pilot will be calling out the landing radar readouts of H and H dot, that is altitude and descent rate, respectively the uh, so-called low level of propellant quantities will be called out when the propellant quantities reach 5.8 percent at that time the uh, burn time remaining will be approximately 111 seconds 91 seconds into this margin there's a point called bingo this is the point where the commander has to make the decision to go ahead and land or to begin vertical motion uh, and then uh, abort stage in case it's a no-go situation on the landing. He has approximately 20 seconds to make this decision to land. The Capcom, in this case uh, Jim Irwin for the Orion, will make this uh, call of low level and bingo to the crew at the appropriate times. Some 19 seconds away from predicted acquisition as Orion and Casper come around the moon. And uh, Casper, meanwhile, will have circularized. 25 minutes, 47 seconds from ignition. Should have acquisition now. We're standing by for that. Remains to be seen whether the steerable antenna on the Orion is functioning properly as we come around on Revolution 13. In any case, uh, whether it works or not, we're still go for landing at this point. The displays here in Mission Control have switched from the lunar orbit background projection plotters to the XY plotters of altitude, velocity, and so on, uh, colored lines that are driven by radar. for the descent and landing phase. We have AOS of the lunar module Orion. Let's switch on to air ground. Houston, I'm reading you. Uh, we want you to stay with the Omni antenna. Orion is Houston. How do you read? Orion, this is Houston. How do you read? Hey, can't go off you, Jeffrey. Orion, over. Orion, this is Houston. I read you uh, rather weak. How do you read us? Right here, five by the command module did not do start. And uh, we're standing by uh, to free all decision with him. Over. Roger, right, I you understand you're standing by. We want you to stay with the Omni, and uh, we'll be requesting high bed rate shortly. Roger. And we're ready for high bed rate now. We copy, no, sir. We copied, no, sir. 
Okay, you have high pit rate. Okay, anticipate a wave off for uh, this one. Set you up for the next one. Okay. Okay, it's Kent's right out in front of us, maybe about uh, 600 feet. So we have a visual on him. Okay, we copy. What attitude do you want us to go to for best? Stay right where you are, John. You've done the Tom's fairly good. Okay. Well, Ryan, will you confirm forward Omni? Roger, that's what you have, forward Omni. Lunar module Orion has been advised of the possibility of a wave off for landing on this revolution. It seems that the uh, circularization burn on the command module Casper was unsuccessful. Orion, this is Houston. We'd like you to go back to normal RCS configuration. Roger. Jim, uh, be advised, we had a couple of. Uh RCS Reg A lights on the back side and by flipping the system it uh, went out. Ready, we copy, Charlie. Houston, how do you read? Over. Ryan, is Houston. Read you loud and clear. Okay, I don't, I don't think we're going to have a, a, a re meeting problem here. But we're uh, pointed right at him, and uh, as I look at him on my LPD, Ken is out at uh, 46 degrees in about, uh, oh, I'd say eight, 800 or 900 feet, maybe a thousand. All right, can you see those uh, booms that had the, uh, the problem? Everything's retracted in the SIP bay. Okay, we copy. This is Apollo Control. We are going around at least one more rev before attempting the power descent initiation for Lunar Module Orion. Ken Mattingly in Command Module Casper encountered some problems in preparing for the service propulsion system burn for the circularization maneuver. It seems that a uh, secondary circuit on the thrust vector control system apparently did not come up to uh, specifications so the circularization burn was aborted and uh, we have a wave off we'll stand by for the remainder of this front side pass as a new uh, circularization burn maneuver is calculated and troubleshooting continued or Ken Mattingly and his problem aboard Casper. Uh, Houston, uh, 16. Uh, go ahead, 16. All right, Jim, uh, you guys working on some more pads and stuff for us? Oh, yeah, we are, Charlie, and uh, when you get a chance, we'll take your uh, eggs cow if you have those. Uh, yeah, sure do, stand by. We like to pitch down to keep uh, Ken inside. Is that possible? Okay, you're clear. Okay, starting with uh, five four zero minus zero zero eight plus zero zero one plus zero zero two plus zero zero six plus zero five. Uh, correction, plus zero four five minus zero eight eight, and the initial numbers were the same as on the uh, data card book. Okay, beginning, uh, here's the readback, beginning at 540, minus 008, plus 001, plus 002, plus 006, plus 045, minus 088. And the initial values were the same as on the card. Over. That's the permanent. Okay, and on your uh, RCS situation, we suspect that the the burst disk went on the back side. We'd like to... Uh, Make sure that the system A pressure, when the source pressure in system A gets down to 500 psi, we'd like you to close off system A. Over. 
Roger. Uh, when you say absorbed pressure, you mean helium? Affirmative. Okay, uh, Jim, the helium's holding right up there. It's uh, uh, 2400, and that was where it was before we started getting those RCS lights. The pressure never has gone above about the 205, 210, maybe. Okay, we copy. Uh, Jim, give me a call when you want us to go to Ant Omni. Roger, we sure will, Chuck. Ken, is your transponder on? Okay. Okay, uh, we're going to try our radar lockup here, too, again. Okay, Orion, let's go low bit rate. This is Apollo Control. Here in Mission Control, all of the This is Apollo Control. Here in Mission Control, all of the options are being considered for the current situation in which the thrust vector control portion of the stabilization and control system, which in turn controls the firing and gimballing of the service propulsion system engine, it's being mulled over. Other options would be uh, rendezvous over the next couple revolutions and possibly using the descent propulsion system aboard Orion for injecting the spacecraft back into a trans-Earth trajectory. Over the next several hours, this uh, consideration should sort itself out. You go high bit rate again. Orion, go aft on me. Orion, go low bit rate. This is Apollo Control at 98.37. The current situation in Apollo 16 is a wave off. That is another revolution before attempting a landing. Flex Ken's trying to call you. However, as mentioned earlier, other options are being looked at in case the troubleshooting on the command module, command service module, stabilization and control system fails to pan out to where the circularization burn or any other service propulsion system burns could be conducted successfully. Forward on it. Ryan, forward on it. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Uh, Houston, how do you read Orion? Over. Read you loud and clear, Orion. Get it.
We're going to do a P-52 and get ready for another PDI. Over. Stand by. We'll take Okay, Orion, this is Houston. Uh, you can go ahead uh, with your P-52, John. We're thinking uh, of having you all try to get back closer together on the back side if you're closer to the approach. You can have some more words to you on that. And then later we decide for the PDI, then we'll... Uh, This is Apollo Control. There's a rather busy huddle around the flight director's console here in Mission Control. As all the options for the current situation in the mission are considered, shall we continue trying to troubleshoot the problem with the command service module stabilization control system? Or shall we proceed with re-rendezvous and a trans-earth injection burn at several hours hence. The possibility is still open for troubleshooting and fixing the problem with the system that controls the service propulsion system and uh, just landing at a later time. We are hopeful that before loss of signal on this 12th revolution of Apollo 16 that the decision will be made. At 98.46, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control. Spacecraft communicator Jim Irwin in the next few moments should pass up to the crew of Orion what the current thinking is here in the control room on attacking the problems that have arisen in a, the Apollo 16 mission. Orion, go aft on me. Orion, it's an aft on me. Orion, go forward on me. Orion, go forward on me. This is Apollo Control. Aboard the command module Casper, Ken Mattingly is troubleshooting the SCS, reading out what his uh, onboard indications are. Let's uh, listen to that for a while and switch away from Orion. I have no MTBC. I'm going clockwise on the translation hand controller. Mark it. I still have no MTBC. I'm bringing on the pitch two gimbal. Mark. I'm checking the thumb wheel down to zero, up to one, back to one half. The yaw thumb wheel is going over to one, and I don't, let me try it again. There it goes. I didn't have the motor on. I'm turning it off. I'll turn it on one more time. Okay, it's stable. I'm taking the trim, which is now set at uh, a little over one in the thumb wheel, down towards zero. I move it slowly. It gets a little dynamics, and then it stops. I'm going to take it down to zero at about this rate. It oscillates, and now it's diverging, and I'm turning the gimbal motor off. I'm going to hold in this configuration. Roger, copy. Ken, what we'd like for you to do now is crank up the yaw 2 gimbal again to that stable condition, and then let's see what MTBC does to it, see if that will excite the oscillation. It did last time. I now have the gimbal on again. And I'm going to give it a little yaw, and there it goes. Coming off, mark. Roger, copy. Would you like to take a look at it in Excel command? Stand by. Understand, stand by. Roger, Ken, go ahead and let's try it in Excel command. Okay, and it's diverging all on its own in Excel command. I didn't put any inputs into it. Roger, copy. This is Apollo Control, 99 hours and one minute, round elapsed time. Flight Director Jerry Griffin is uh, instructing the two spacecraft communicators to uh, 
brief the crew on the current situation in which apparently we have as long as five lunar orbits to make a determination on the feasibility of continuing with the landing or whether we will have to rendezvous with the two spacecraft back together and do a, an immediate return to Earth assuming that the service propulsion system would be inoperative some 14 minutes away from loss of signal with the command module. We'll monitor the uh, discussion between the spacecraft communicator and the crew of Orion and Mattingly and Casper. Hello, Orion and uh, Casper. This is Houston. Roger, it looks like uh, we're not going to have a decision on this rev, and uh, we do have the capability of spending about five revs in this configuration before we have to make that decision. We would like uh, you all to move in to a station-keeping position, and you should be at the closest point of approach at about 100 hours, and we're recommending a CSM active to move in to a position and to station-keep and we're going to run some simulations down here on this TVC problem. And we'll get back to you. Casper, this Houston, you copy too, didn't you? Okay. Right, I'm with you. I still have the uh, solar Kimball motors on and the bus ties, so uh, we'll stand by on that. Okay, Ken, uh, we'd like to try one more thing. There's a remote possibility that the RHC may be inducing some noise or transits into the system. We'd like you to kill all power to the RHCs, turn off both AC and DC, and repeat the gimbal check in AC XL command and see if the gimbal takes off. Okay, I've got, uh, I secured the hand controller by just taking normal two power to off. And the rest of the powers were off. I'm in XL command on y'all, and I'm going number two up to uh, start. And it's in Excel and it's stable. Would you like for me to try the thumb wheels? Stand by one. And with a little excitation from the thumb wheel, it took off again. Roger, understand. Ken, uh, for that rendezvous, we're suggesting to use the procedure you worked on there in the simulator, just moving in when you're at closest approach. Okay, Hank, we'll do that. Thank you. Let me see if there's anything else they want to do with this uh, gimbal thing before we shut it down. Stand by one. Casper Houston, we'd like you to try for our data. One more. Y'all, primary, y'all secondary, GNN, servo loop check, gimbal check. Henry, did you say primary and secondary on this GNN drive? Uh, negative, just just the secondary loop. I didn't mean to say primary. Okay. Can I turn the uh, other three gimbal motors off? Uh, say again, you were blocked out. I say, uh, I'd like to turn the other three gimbal motors off if we don't need them. All uh, right, Roger, go ahead and turn those off. Okay. I'm now uh, going, I mean, this. And CMC control, I'm sitting on 204, and I have program 509 loaded. I'm starting gimbal number two, yaw. Okay, it's stable now. I'm going to do a proceed on 204. Roger. Well, it doesn't look like I got anything that time. Uh, I, mean, I think you're going to be in... Uh uh, GNN or CMC control, haven't you? Okay, let's try it again. Go back over everything. Okay, I'm coming up. I'm going to start it again, and we'll try it. Uh, as soon as I turn, well, by golly, it's, it damped itself there. It started out uh, wild, and then settled down. Now I'm going to proceed on 204. Roger. 
plus two and it's oscillating, minus two and it's oscillating about one degree each, and it's oscillating in the center. It is not divergent, however. Now, now it's going to trim and it's oscillating about uh, plus or minus uh, almost two degrees, or plus or minus one degree. I'm going to turn it off. Mark. Roger, copy. This is Apollo Control in 99 hours, 11 minutes, into the mission of Apollo 16. To recap the current situation, the crews of both vehicles, Casper and Orion, have been instructed to uh, station keep as they come their, to their closest approach during the next uh, pass behind the moon with the command service module being active in the rendezvous. We have some five hours to resolve the current problem, which consists of uh, difficulty by Ken Mattingly in getting the thrust vector control system, which uh, keeps the service propulsion engine aligned through the center of gravity on the command service module. At the same time, uh, people on the ground here in Mission Control and over in the training building are running simulations to uh, attempt to develop a bypass or a workaround for the situation that Ken Mattingly has encountered in his preparations for the circularization burn. Some three minutes away from uh, loss of signal. I've been advised that the average G killed your EMP. Okay, thank you. This is Apollo Control. One slight correction. We have five revolutions, which amounts to ten hours in which to make the decision before the geometry of the two spacecraft orbits would dictate uh, no landing would be out of plane with the landing site beyond the capability of the descent propulsion system to steer into the landing site. To repeat again, that is five revolutions instead of five hours. Casper, Houston, we're about two minutes from uh, LOS, and when you come around next time in that rendezvous, just come up on the best Omni, and then we'll get high gain from there. Okay, Hank, and uh, is there anything else that you can think of that we could do? We might uh, try and take a look at it. Otherwise, we'll just be station keeping it a uh, hundred feet or so. We can't think of anything else down here, Ken. Okay. Thank you, sir. See you in a few minutes. Uh, Ken, for your info, we uplinked a new vector to the limb, and we weren't able to get yours in, so there will be a small difference, a couple of feet per second. control. We've had loss of signal. The end of the, near the end of the 13th lunar revolution as both spacecraft go around the back of the moon. Supply Director Jerry Griffin is um, having what he calls a tag up with all, with all of the uh, console positions here in the control center for a uh, discussion of the current situation in Apollo 16. We've had a wave off so far, and that is the current posture of the mission. Crew will rendezvous at the next closest approach time and station keep until such time as uh, a resolution is made here on the ground on whether or not to continue the mission or to re-rendezvous, dock, and do an immediate trans-Earth injection burn. They're attempting to work around the problem in the command service module, thrust vector control circuitry, which apparently 
bombed out on Ken Mattingly when he was preparing for a circularization burn. We have some five revolutions in which the decision can be made before it would be a definite no-go for landing at 99.18 and 46 minutes away from acquisition on Rev 14 this is Apollo Control this is Apollo Control 99 hours 31 minutes ground elapsed time into the mission of Apollo 16 to recap the current situation here in Mission Control Center various Considerations are underway on whether or not to continue the mission with a later landing or to uh, have the two spacecraft, Orion and Casper, rendezvous, dock, and do a trans-Earth injection burn using the Lunar Module's descent propulsion system. This would assume, of course, that the service propulsion system on the command module is inoperative because of the apparent problem in the uh, SCS or stabilization control system which in turn drives and controls the uh, SPS system aboard the command service module. We have something in the neighborhood of five revolutions or about ten hours in which to reach the decision on the outcome of the lunar landing. As Orion came around the east limb of the moon this last revolution in preparation for power descent initiation, they were prepared for the landing. However, Casper, piloted by Ken Mattingly, reported that he had not made the circularization burn since that time, there have been many huddles here in the control room. Uh, engineers are going over drawings in the back rooms. Simulations are underway here in, at Manned Spacecraft Center to determine the nature of the service propulsion system control problem. And hopefully by the time the crew comes around the corner again, some 31 minutes from now, at least uh, some clarity will come out of the situation. But, as I mentioned earlier, it uh, may take uh, the entire five revolutions. The limit of five revolutions has to do with the orbital geometry, because after that time, the orbital plane of the lunar module would, be, would have drifted so far away from the landing site that the there's not ample propellant to steer into the Descartes landing area from the present orbit without a plane change. At 99.34 and 30 minutes and 30 seconds from acquisition of signal in both spacecraft, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 99 hours, 56 minutes. Ground elapsed time into the mission of Apollo 16 some 7 minutes 40 seconds away from acquisition on the 14th lunar revolution. To recap again the current situation in the mission, the circularization burn for command module Casper was aborted when Ken Mattingly discovered some discrepancies in the backup system which controls the service propulsion engine. We still have a good prime system, that is a guidance and navigation system, aboard the command module. However, we would be one failure away for the very critical trans-Earth injection maneuver, which requires fairly lengthy burn and a stable engine bell from the service propulsion system. Therefore, uh, Quite a few uh, people here in Houston and at the spacecraft manufacturer in Downey, California, are looking into the ramifications of the backup system 
having uh, apparently failed, would this present any structural strain on the spacecraft if the engine bell went to full yaw? And uh, would we be able to do a successful trans-Earth injection with this engine? As all of these questions are answered, the decision will be made whether or not to continue with the landing phase or to rendezvous and do a trans-Earth injection burn using the descent engine on the lunar module Orion. We have uh, about five revolutions or some ten hours in total time in which to make this decision. This again is dictated by the orbital mechanics the fact that the lunar module would drift away from the desired ground track for the landing site at Descartes during uh, at any time past these five revolutions. The goal team of flight controllers will stay on duty in the control center for the landing if the decision is made to land. If the decision is made to rendezvous and do a docked descent propulsion system burn to bring the spacecraft home, Pete Frank's orange team will take over. Some four minutes, 37 seconds now away from acquisition. And at 100 hours even, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 100 hours, three minutes, ground elapsed time. Less than a minute now away from acquisition of Orion and Casper coming around the east limb of the moon on the 14th lunar revolution. Standing by for acquisition here, half a minute away. The atmosphere here in the control room is reminiscent of the period just after the cryogenic oxygen tank incident on Apollo 13. Ten seconds. We're waiting confirmation from the network controller that we've had acquisition. We have AOS lunar module. Let's stand by now for uh, resumption of communications between the control center. Jim Irwin, Capcom, and the crew of Casper and Orion. And Orion, how do you read? Orion, this is Houston. Read you loud and clear. Right, you're the same old Jim. We're about uh, seven tenths of a mile out from uh, Casper now. Say again, Charlie, we still have excessive noise down here. I'd say our range to uh, Casper is about seven tenths of a mile. And he's open at two and a half. He put in uh, some positive grade uh, velocity to go up and above and come down and get with us. Okay, we copy. The total is light. Okay, 16, this is Houston. We still do not have an answer, but people are working very feverishly. Ryan, Roger. Okay, uh, thank you. It'll probably be a while before we get to station keeping anyway. Roger. Stand by, Ken. Houston, Orion. All right, go ahead, Orion. Okay, uh, we got an RCS system, uh, a reg light. Uh, pressure's helium is looking like uh, 2300. Uh, uh, the uh, propellant is at 210. Uh, the uh, fuel manifold and, and ox manifold is correct to make it 215 or 220. And uh, everything else looks uh, pretty good. Uh, pressures are holding up. Uh, along. You think the burst disk is gone? Uh, Roger, that looks that way to us, Charlie. Yes, Casper, this is Houston. Read you loud and clear. Okay. Roger, we copy, Ken. Uh, Ryan, this is uh, 
Houston, we're wondering where you got the estimate of uh, seven tenths of a nautical mile range. We got the rendezvous radar locked on. If you want us to, if you want us to turn it off. No, that's fine. Uh, Houston, uh, Ryan, uh, John, and I've been talking about. Uh, we get the land this thing. Uh, uh, we'd like to probably uh, ought to think about going to sleep first, and we'll get up into a full EVA tomorrow. Roger, we, we concur down here. Okay, Casper, this is Houston. Uh, we're recommending that you uh, null the line of sight rates and uh, fire five feet per second toward the limb. We copy you, Ken. Okay, Ken, we show you coming up on uh, Paraloon now, so uh, you'll be affecting your Apaloon. Okay, that sounds good, Ken. Roger, we were hoping that... We think your state vector was fairly accurate, Ken. And you'll be at Paralone in 15 minutes. Uh, that's affirmative. Ken, can you give us your position relative to the limb? Yeah, he's, a, he's ahead of us, and I saw him about uh, level and uh, 6,500 feet out and opening at 3 feet of length. Okay, we copy your position as ahead. Below and about one nautical mile. And he's opening at uh, two and a half on uh, 1678. Roger. And three feet a second on the tape meter. Okay, on the, on the coass, I've got him four sided there, and he's uh, 355 59 from uh, local vertical. Okay, uh, Casper, this is Houston. Uh, we're convinced that we want you to fire directly at the limb about five feet per second. We want to get a positive uh, closing rate. Okay, it looks like the damp isn't stable now. How about if I give it a verb 46? Okay, do we copy? Can we show you in free? I am now, but I wasn't. Okay. Does that mean I'm clear to do a verb 46? Ryan, let's go a little bit right. You have it. Okay, I got it under control, Jim. I had, to, I had a bad dip. This is Apollo Control at 100 hours, 21 minutes. Still uh, standing by here for a resolution of the Apparent problem okay. with the no, stabilization and control system control. aboard the command service module. Meanwhile, the two spacecraft are making the necessary maneuvers for rendezvous. Or I should qualify that to say station keeping. Right now, the rendezvous radar display shows a separation of some one nautical mile. Jasper, this is Houston. Hold up on that uh, RCS maneuver. Okay, I put him three foot per second. Hold up, Ken. Okay, hold it there. Okay, holding it three. The maneuver.
Mattingly was attempting was a uh, five foot per second line of sight RCS maneuver toward the lunar module. Right now he's uh, head and below the lunar module by about one nautical mile straight line distance. We would like to re-emphasize that uh, this will be strictly for station keeping. Lunar landing is still not positively ruled out at this time, depending on what decision is made on the reliability of the stabilization and control system to control the SPS engine on the service module. Continuing to monitor air ground from both spacecraft. This is Apollo Control, 100 hours, 24 minutes. We need a range and range rate reading now. Ten thousand feet, closing at three feet a second, and we have a line of sight range. How do we copy? Yeah, Casper, this is Houston. You uh, should know the line of sight rates. Okay, do you want me to keep them dull and go all the way in? Is that the idea? Roger, keep a positive uh, closing rate. Okay. It's likely that the uh, expense will do that. Okay. Fine, why don't you tell me uh, what to do there, John? Okay. Press down and I'll tell you which way the needle moves. Good. That's, that's the wrong way, Ken. That's sure towards the moon. Were you thrusted? That's firm. Okay, thrust away from the moon. That's doing it. A little more. You didn't get it corrected, Ken. How's that now? Oh, it's just uh, not moving very much at all. Okay, that's a good place to stop. No, you're, you're, it's going to be expensive, Ken, to do this, but you, you're going to have to thrust up. Okay, I, I just uh, need some gouges to win, and I've got it null. Okay, you don't have it null. How's that? That's, uh, you've got four mil of engine set. Okay, we're going to reach three. Three feet of back close. Okay. You're at 6,600 feet. Still going down? That's affirmative. You've got it to three mil of radiance. You've got it to two mil radiance. You've got it to two mil radiance. Now you got it, Kim. Kill it. Okay. Looks to me now like I'm drifting the other way. Not according to my needles. Okay, I'll believe your needles. Ryan, request you uh, select the secondary Ryan, transmit and receiver. Okay, uh, Houston, the Ryan says that they have already selected the secondary. Okay, 
Houston, how do you read now? Uh, read you loud and clear, Ryan. Okay, you're five by. That's a problem looking. Sixteen, uh, no answers yet. We're still looking at it. Okay, Ken, you're at uh, 50, uh, 600 feet, closing at 14 seconds. Okay, Orion, this is Houston. We'd like you to open the primary power amp circuit breaker on 16. It's open, Jim. Roger. Okay, Orion, let's go high bid rate. Right, you have high bit rate. I do. Okay, Kent, uh, you're getting a line of sight rate. Uh, you're going to have to trust a little bit more at the moon. Okay, we can't hold high bit rate. Request you go back to low bit rate, Orion. That's the right direction. Needle bit move, kid. That's the right direction. Sounds pretty good, Ken. Okay. okay. Uh, Ryan, this is Houston. Could you give us a range and range rate readout? Okay, uh, 4,900 feet, closing at 5. Right here, 4,900, closing at 5. by Ken. Okay, well, you're 4,000 feet now at 5 feet a second, Ken. Okay. Hopefully, and, most and, of it. And your line of sight rate is starting to build a little in the other direction. You've got it now. Uh, Ryan, uh, this is Houston. Is the uh, CSM uh, above you or below you? We hope he's directly ahead. Five degrees above. Above the local vertical. Roger. Right and he's got a, a five foot a second close rate and his line of sights are dulled on the radar. Roger. Right and they look like they're killed completely on the uh, optics too. Gonna need your tracker light here in a minute. You're just getting a little blinded sunlight now. Okay.
What's the closure right now? Still five feet a second. Still off three and a half feet a second now at 3,000. Three and a half feet per second. Roger. Okay. All I've got is the tracker light. I've lost the rest of your image. Okay. You're going to have to thrust a little more to kill that rate the same way. Okay. They've got a lot of it, but not all of it. Okay. you got most of it. Okay, Casper, this is Houston. You might pick up a uh, temperature caution light on your quads, but uh, it's of no consequence. Okay, uh, yeah, I see uh, B is up high. Is that due to the thruster activity? Affirmative, Ken. Or is that due to uh, heater fail on? I think it's thruster activity. Ryan, this is Houston. Will you give us another range and range rate, John? Yep, uh, 3,100 3, feet at three and a half. Are you at 3,100 or three and a half? Roger, at angle of 68 degrees to local vertical now. Understand, 68 degrees. Okay, hey, kid, you got a slight rate going to the south according to my needle. Houston, uh, we want you to get the uh, rendezvous radar and the tracking light off as soon as it's uh, feasible. Let's conserve power. Roger, we will. It's not good feasible right now. No, we understand. Okay, it looks like I may be a little more to the south. Just a hair. Okay, you're at uh, 24. signal on Rev 15, that's the start of the next revolution, they will be given a go, no go for a landing on Rev 16. Hopefully by that time the uh, situation will re will have resolved itself on the uh, thrust vector control system, which drives the 
SPS. Apparently there's a problem in the uh, yaw gimbal actuator in the uh, service propulsion system. No, we've been going the right direction all along. Yeah. Okay. The uh, decision has not yet been made and hopefully will be made prior to the time of acquisition of signal on Revolution 15. Some 19 minutes remaining in this 14th revolution. Add to that 47 minutes of backside pass and at uh, the start of that rev we'll either be go for landing or for immediate rendezvous docking and subsequent return home. This is Apollo Control at 100 hours, 51 minutes. Can my closure rate? We're going to uh, put a second on the tape meter. It is close to very fast. Yeah, that's why I was just wondering. I need a little more plus action. Okay, say when and how much. Okay, I'm going to put in a foot plus action. Ryan, this is uh, Houston. We're showing about 10 minutes okay. to uh, LOS, and uh, I have some words 
for you on our general plan when it's convenient. Go ahead. Okay, when you come up on uh, AOS on the next rev, rev 15, we'll give you a go or no go for another try. And we'd be looking at PDI on rev 16. And at that time, we'd uh, have pads for you and procedures. Over. Casper, this is Houston. Right ahead. Uh, Roger, we want you to verify that you're in auto dump on the, uh, the water. That's pressure relief in the number two position. That's vertical. And if you have an opportunity to get away from the controls there, uh, we'd like you to manually dump the water to 10% on the back side. That should require about 17 minutes. Over. Okay, Ken, the line of sight rate is uh, starting to uh, have to drop down a little, or up and up a little. This is Houston. We'd like you to configure for RCS Bravo only. Over.
16 uh, this is Houston. We're showing about two minutes to LOS, and if you give us a range and range rate and 10, perhaps you could repeat it for us. Roger, we copy it down here. Thank you.
go for landing. Some 44 minutes remaining now until acquisition and Rev 15. During the next uh, three quarters of an hour, the decision should be firmed up on a go for landing. Go, no go decision. And at 101 hours, 14 minutes, ground elapsed time into the mission of Apollo 16. This is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 101 hours, 44 minutes into the mission of Apollo 16. 14 minutes before the start of revolution number 14 around the moon, at which time, uh, shortly after the spacecraft, which now should be nose-to-nose station-keeping, will come around the east limb of the moon. They will be given a go-no-go -no -go decision from the ground on whether or not to make the landing during the succeeding rev, revolution or lunar orbit number 16. To recap again, the source of the current situation and delaying the landing. The secondary or backup system, which actually acts as a tiller for the large 20,000-pound thrust engine and the service propulsion system, or the Uh, main engine on the command service module has experienced some difficulties in the yaw mode or the left and right motion of the engine. The engine is moved up and down left and right by what is called what are called gimbal actuators. This backup system in the command module guidance equipment is used uh, if there's a failure in the primary system which is called the guidance and navigation or GNN system and the flight mission rules call for both systems to be functioning perfectly before a landing is committed simulations uh, at the manufacturer's plant in California and then the command module simulators here in Houston have been underway for the last several hours to determine the possible effects of uh, having this oscillation, left to right oscillation by the engine, whether or not it would damage the spacecraft structurally. Some initial times have been generated here by the flight dynamics people on the maneuvers for a landing should the decision be made to continue with the landing. The command module circularization burn would be made at 103.2205. The power descent ignition or the start of the landing phase would be at 104.17 20 ground elapsed time. These times are subject to change within a few seconds one way or another. To repeat again, some 11 minutes from now the two spacecraft will come around the front side to start of lunar orbit number 15. The spacecraft communicator will pass up to the crew the go-no-go -go decision for landing during revolution number 16. The crew is requested that if a landing is made that the EVAs be postponed until after they can have a sleep period. This is Apollo Control, 101 hours, 50 minutes ground elapsed time. Man Spacecraft Center Director, Dr. Christopher C. Kraft, Jr., just came back into the control center after having attended a meeting by management people in one of the back rooms, and the situation is go for landing. We 
to reaffirm we do have a go for landing in revolution number 16. That decision will be passed up to the crew at acquisition of signal some seven minutes from now as they come around the front side of the moon. The new maneuver timelines will be read up to the crew for circularization by the command module and power descent and landing by lunar module Orion. To repeat again, we are go for landing. This is Apollo Control at 101.51. This is Apollo Control, 101 hours, 56 minutes, ground elapsed time in the mission of Apollo 16. Less than two minutes prior to acquisition of signal with Orion and Casper coming around from the rear face of the moon on the 15th revolution. As the conversation begins with the crew, the word that the rear go for landing will be passed up to the crew. Apparently during the simulations here and at uh, Downey, California, it has been determined that the uh, oscillations in the backup control system which controls the uh, motion of the large engine on the service propulsion system would present no structural hazard to the spacecraft. The backup system uh, is all is go at this time and we've had no problem at all with the primary system, the GNN system as it's called. To repeat again, the uh, preliminary times for command module circularization burn would be 103.2205 for the power descent initiation, 104.17.20. Standing by for acquisition some 20 seconds from now, 10 seconds away. New uh, flight control team schedule being posted on one of the Ida 4 projectors. Quickly. Beginning to hear noise on the downlink, waiting for confirmation from the network controller that we have solid lock on with the spacecraft. We got AOS, let's wait. Ryan, this is Houston. Hello, Houston. Uh, Roger, I have uh, some uh, switches and circuit breakers we want you to uh, take care of to uh, try to improve the calm situation. I'll give them to you as soon as you're ready to copy. Okay, we want on panel 12, track mode switch off. On panel 16, primary transmitter and receiver, circuit breaker open. S-band antenna heater, circuit breaker open. S-band antenna comm, circuit breaker open. And primary S-band power amplifier open. Then on panel 11, AC bus, S-band antenna open. Over. Okay, uh, turn off the uh, track mode. Uh, well, 12 track mode. Off. Is that right, Jim? That's right. Track mode switch off on PAL-12. Okay, you'll have to find another name for that switch. Oh, okay. We got it. A long day. And did you copy those circuit breakers, Charlie? Okay, yeah, he's got them. We're getting them down. Okay, and uh, you do have a go for another try here at uh, EDI on Rev 16. And I have some words on that problem with the PVC whenever you all are ready to copy. Well, I'm all ears. I don't know about Ken. We're good. 
Okay, as Orion can always tell Casper what his problem is, but uh, it looks like an open circuit in the rate feedback and your servo loop. We run exhaustive tests down here uh, on the west coast and east coast on uh, controllability aspects and structural aspects, and uh, everything looks satisfactory. On Apollo 9, we ran a similar test was run, as you probably remember. And if uh, such a such a problem did occur up there, you could expect uh, oscillations, of course, with the gimbal, but you could expect a steady attitude. It would be a limit cycle. So we're convinced down here that we have a satisfactory control mode if we have to revert to that one. Over. Affirmative, Ken. Okay, uh, that must be some number bigger than what I looked at. And the other question, the only other question I had is, is there any connection between this turbine and, uh, and the uh, longer duration people on time? Okay, the answer to that, Ken, is uh, negative. Charlie, on that circuit breaker list on panel 16, it was primary transmitter. Casper, Houston, receiver, we're on two loops now. S band antenna heater, S band antenna com, primary S band power amp. And then on panel 11, okay, just one Thank AC you. bus S band antenna. Uh, hey, Ken, I've got a couple other words uh, about that if you'd like to listen. Okay, we got them all. Okay, understand uh, that's complete? I surely would, too. Okay. Uh, most of the cases okay, let me give you some where they appear the to be diverging to you uh, and you and shut it off the motor up to you. with short we'll and some of them was just and then we want very close to, to the point at which it became stable. One. And, and you'll pick up on the some of the, uh, the longer ones, uh, we did see the stability. But those that you call the diverging uh, were short of uh, reaching this stable point. Like it I have, uh, uh, it appears that the uh, controllability... 102-3550 and uh, perform a 400 plus 3 after the P-52. And for the P-52, use the same stars as the P-52 in the timeline book. Of course, after the uplinks to you, uh, verb 47. Over. All right, we copy all that. Uh, one thing, you want us to do option three before the option one? Uh, negative, just the option one. Okay. Okay, we're ready to copy. Okay, we're standing by for the pads. Ryan, will you uh, turn S-band ranging switch off? Ranging is off. Now yeah, let's go high bit rate. Uh, you're a high bit rate. Is Casper going to get a little set maneuver here? Yes, we'll be giving that. And I have the T2, uh, T3 aborts pads if you're ready to copy, Charlie. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, Lima, one zero four four two one six six four one 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 zero three three zero 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 T two at PDI plus two four plus five four and then T three nectar. 
1-0-6-2-5-1-1-8-1. Over. Right, say Lima and Mike again. Okay, Lima is 1-0-4-4-2-1-6-6-4. Over. Copy that. Also, Mike. Okay, uh, Mike is 1-1-1-0-3-3-0-0-0. One, 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 zero, three, three, zero, zero, zero. Over. Okay, copy. Uh, T2 is the PDI plus uh, 2454. And we have uh, Lima, 1-0-4-4-2-1-6-6-4, one, 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 three, three, zero, zero, zero. November, 1-0-6-2-5-1-7-8-1. Over. Uh, Roger, on uh, November there, it's uh, the seconds, 1-1-8-1, one, one, one. over. Copy, 1-1. One, one. And I have the uh, PDI pad when you're ready. Go ahead. Okay, here's uh, India first. One zero four one seven. Two three two nine one one zero four plus zero 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 three six zero zero two one one four three four zero plus five six nine or eight zero Juliet one zero seven zero five four five zero zero Kilo one zero nine zero four three zero 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 over copy uh, PDI pad one zero four one seven two three two nine one one zero zero plus zero 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 three six zero zero two one one four three four zero plus five six nine eight zero one zero seven zero five four five zero zero one zero nine Zero four three zero 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 over. Uh, Roger. Now I have the uh, no PDI plus twelve. Uh, Ryan, uh, we turned biomed okay, off. Okay, go ahead. Okay, you got the old biomed off. Okay, and here's no PDI plus twelve. One zero four three zero. All zeros. Plus zero one zero two three plus all zeros minus zero zero five zero 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 one three eight four plus zero zero one one four zero one one three nine zero three five all zeros two seven one zero eight seven zero zero Plus zero one zero two six all zeros minus zero zero four nine or four one zero five one eight all zeros one zero seven zero five four five zero zero throttle profile ten percent for twenty six seconds full throttle for remainder over. Roger, copy. Give me the noun uh, 42 again, over. Roger, noun 42. 0-1-3-8-4 plus 0 0 one one four zero one one three nine. Over.
ready to copy. Okay, Orion, uh, we're going to hold up. We've got to get some high bit rate. Orion, select down voice back up. I read you uh, very, very weak. We want you to go to uh, Pooh and Data. We're going to send you some uplinks, and we do not want you to uh, transmit until the uplinks are complete. Uh, Ryan, we want you to go to Down Voice Backup. Uh, Ryan, this is Houston with the uh, new set pad and surf pad, whenever you're ready. Okay, no transmissions here. You guys should maintain radio silence up there. Okay, Orion, we have the uplinks in, and I'm ready to give you the ag support constants. Okay, uh, Houston, we're going to have to get the ag support constants. Okay, uh, stand by. Go ahead. Okay, uh, beginning with 224, plus 60529, plus 29402, plus 60406, plus zero zero five seven two minus three two six six four minus five four four zero one and we want you to reload three seven three with plus zero eight five seven four change two five four to plus zero eight eight one seven over Good read back, and of course, 662 and 673 are minus. That's affirmative. Okay, and I have the set pad and cert yeah. pad if you're ready. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, uh, set pad is uh, at 102, 30, all zeros. And on the surf pad, ignition, one zero three two one four two four three. Now in eighty ones plus zero zero six nine or one plus all zeros minus zero zero four three five. Over. Okay. Uh, hopefully that's a set pad. Take a one zero three two one. Four three plus zero 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 six nine or uh, correction plus zero zero six nine or one minus all balls minus zero zero four three five over. Roger, that's the the circ pad. The other uh, the first one was the set pad. Okay, just a tick. Okay, we're going to get to work. Uh, start uh, loading these ag stuff. Okay, and uh, after you load those uh, ag support constants, you'll be. Uh, clean to pick up on the timeline book at uh, the CERC burn. Uh, Roger, after the C-52. Yeah. Okay, uh, Houston, uh, do we have a new left DAP weight? Stand by. Or is that worth moving with? 
Ryan, this is Houston. We'd like you to uh, open AC bus A tape recorder on panel 11. Okay, it's coming open. And I have a PIPA bias okay, for you open. when you're ready to copy. Okay, address 1456, data 03141, over. Okay, 156, say again, the data. 03141, over. Right, 1456, address 03141. Good read, Bert. We're internet now. Brian, this is Houston. We'd like you to open the update a link circuit breaker on panel 11 and go to normal voice configuration. Very good. Much better, Charlie. Okay. Hey, can you say something about our trajectory now? Are we still 17,000 feet south and uh, same as before? Stand by, John. We'll have some words for you. Okay. Can I assume you want to use both the uh, systems for PDI, uh, both RTSs? We're still talking about that down here, John. Okay. Orion, this is Houston. Uh, at the present time, it looks like you'll be coming in 16,000 feet high and about 20,000 feet south. Okay, I understand. 16,000 high, 20,000 south. Roger. Uh, Jim, uh, John and I just uh, laughing. We'd like to go back to the Sims, please. So would we. Glad you turned the biomed off. Houston, okay to do that B-52 now? Houston, are we clear to do the B-52 now? Roger, as soon as you're uh, in darkness, John, we'll just uh, an advisory. It's option one. Understand, option one, and we're going to jar our target. Roger. Uh, Jim, we're into the P-52. We've got you on the uh, aft army now. Roger, we copy. That new rest mat was uh, pretty close to the old one, just a couple of degrees, right? That's affirmative. Man, when those uh, jets turn on, Jim, uh, nobody would ever commented before, but it really uh, horses this old thing around. Roger. Okay, uh, Ryan, this is Houston. We have another procedure we wanted you to try uh, for the comm problem. Go ahead. Okay, uh, we want you to open the secondary power amp circuit breaker on panel 11. And, of course, you'll lose comm when you uh, open that. And then after one minute, uh, close it, and then we'll reestablish comm. Roger, copy. We'll do that after John finishes marking. Okay. Ryan, this is Houston. How do you read? Loud and clear. Oh, you're loud and clear, too. Roger, could you give us the, uh, your now 93s? We had lost data at that point. 
Right, you copy down to 993s, minus 0 0.067 plus 0 0.108 plus 0 0.050. Over. That's hey, uh, Houston, I don't know where Ken is at this point when we missed up to do our P-52, but I trust he's still keeping an eye on us. Are you, Ken? So too. And Orion, uh, this Houston, uh, just a reminder on the uh, the 400 plus three and uh, a verb 47. Roger, we already did that. Okay, very good. Charlie, this is uh, Houston. Could you put your mic a little closer? Your uh, volume seems to be uh, a little lower than, than John's. Okay, how's that? Much better. Okay, I had one of them up every time I turn my head, I get uh, uh, orange juice. Ready? It's delicious, Jim, but it's uh, better in your mouth than floating around a cockpit. I know what you mean. I wish I had some. Yeah. Matter of fact, I've already had an orange shampoo uh, with the helmet on. I guess that's better than no shampoo. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, we were really impressed uh, with the landing site from uh, 10 miles anyway. It sure looks exactly like the LNA. Okay, Charlie, we're kind of curious about the orange juice problem. Uh, did you have a, a bag failure? Well, I think it must be the valve. Uh, the command module water had a lot of air bubbles in it. And when I, of course, when I put my suit on, it uh, sort of compressed everything. And uh, every time my mic comes by and grabs the, the valve, it bends it down just slightly, which is, which is enough to uh, cause some to squirt out uh, due to the pressure from the suit. Over. We copy. I had the same problem all the time in 1G. Yeah, 1G, though, it, uh, you bend over and it's on your visor and you can lick it off. Uh, Casper uh, Ryan transmitting VHFA simplex. How do you read? Uh, Charlie, this Houston, uh, we're kind of concerned about Casper how much Ryan. orange juice uh, might have spilled out. We're concerned about the amount it might have got in the suit loop and its effect on the uh, LIOH canister. But Jim, uh, most of it, for some reason, floated up under my helmet. I mean, my uh, a Snoopy hat. And uh, I'm pretty sticky around uh, temples and all. And I don't think anything, most of it uh, stuck right into my helmet. And the suit loop flow is not enough to uh, drive it down under, into the suit, and I don't uh, feel like I'm wet at all down in that area. Over. Okay, thank you, Chili. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's any of the suit loop to mount to anything. Looking at Charlie, I can tell where most of it is. Uh, yeah, Ken, I'm just seeing how you read. Uh, we're uh, all set to go for your search. Okay, what kind of set maneuver did you do? All right, thank you. Ryan, let's try Biomed left. Okay, you got John's arrhythmia. Roger. Uh, Houston, uh, Ryan, I'd like to confirm that in System A we have uh, enough foliage volume to get all the propellants out of the tank. Over. That's not correct, uh, Charlie. Uh, we'll give you the exact number here shortly. Okay, we're still looking at 2,000, about 2,100 PSI on the helium. Uh, Ryan, this is Houston. In answer to your question, Charlie, uh, if you were to lose uh, source pressure right now, you could get 35% uh, out. 
Okay, we only have 50 percent remaining. Understand. And that 35 percent is enough to uh, complete the mission. Okay, we, do we have a double failure here on uh, the two rigs in that loop? That's affirmative. Okay, so what's holding us is that check valve that uh, unseats at uh, two, about uh, 225 and reseats at 212? That's, that's correct, uh, Charlie, and really uh, you have, should have about 60% in that system. Your gauge has an error in it. We copy. Right, we copy. Uh, Houston, Orion. All right, go ahead, Orion. All right, Jim, uh, we watched uh, Ken's uh, wastewater dump, and uh, I can see why that thing uh, really gives uh, Fido fits. It really comes out of there like a water hose. Okay, we copy. And uh, we took a picture of it or two, and I hope it would come out and show you that. Uh, we had pretty good lighting. Good. We hope you have some good pictures of it. And we're showing uh, about two minutes and a half to LOS. Right, uh, AOS time, please. Stand by. AOS for Rev 16 is uh, 103.51.25. Roger. And we've had loss of signal as Apollo 16 spacecraft, Orion and Casper, have passed behind the moon. The nearing the end of lunar orbit number 15. Some 47 minutes before spacecraft come around for the 16th revolution and subsequent landing which is now scheduled for a ground elapsed time of well, actually the ignition for PDI power descent initiation will be at 104.17.23 with landing some 12 minutes later. The power descent will have a total velocity change of 6,703 feet per second. The crew has been advised, uh, or that is the crew of Orion, that they are, will be about 16,000 feet high above the normal flight path at the time of power descent and some 20,000 feet south of track. However, the lunar module guidance system will guide the spacecraft to take out these discrepancies for a normal landing. After landing, the crew will then uh, have a sleep period prior to beginning the first EVA, which at this time is scheduled to begin at uh, 118 hours, 30 minutes ground elapsed time, or about 10.30 a.m. tomorrow morning, central time. The uh, decision on whether or not the EVAs uh, will be their full length of total of 21 hours will be made during the night while the crew is asleep. Such factors as the consumables remaining and the such as battery power, etc., in the lunar module will have a, an effect on this decision. To go back and recapitulate. The reasons for the delay in landing, as Ken Mattingly came up upon his circularization burn <coughs> during revolution number 13, he experienced a oscillation in, uh, in the yaw mode for the service module engine during checkout. And it turns out that uh, the secondary servo loop or one of the circuits for the yaw gimbal drive, which can be controlled by either the GNN system or the stabilization and control system, which is a backup mode, apparently had uh, this oscillation in it. 
subsequent simulations and tests here and across the country have shown that uh, there's no potential structural hazard to the spacecraft, even if uh, it were necessary to uh, go to the mode where there might be some chatter or oscillation in the yaw gimbal. Uh, gimbal is uh, the yoke on which the engine is mounted, one for pitch and one for yaw, and the thrust vector control system uh, in effect acts as a tiller for turning the engine much as you would use the handle on the uh, outboard motor to direct the thrust of the propeller. The thrust vector control aligns the engine through the center of gravity of the spacecraft. At 103.09 into the mission of Apollo 16, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 103 hours, 49 minutes, ground elapsed time. Less than two minutes before Apollo 16 spacecraft, Orion and Casper come around on the 16th revolution. I'm 27 minutes away from ignition for the power descent and subsequent landing, which should take place around 8.23 p.m. Central Standard Time. Ignition for the descent to the lunar surface is now programmed for ground elapsed time of 104 hours, 17 minutes, 23 seconds. As Casper comes around the corner, it should have circularized its orbit around the moon with uh, the burn maneuver for circularization having taken place at uh, 103.22 ground elapsed time some half hour ago while the spacecraft was behind the moon. Lunar module Orion, weighing some 18 tons now, will weigh half that amount at touchdown, some 9 tons. All of this weight loss is uh, propellant that will be consumed by the descent engine. Here in the control center, all of the scribing plotters and the center display panel in the front of the room have been changed around from lunar orbit tracking chart to show the we, we have CSM AOS as confirmed by the network controller we'll uh, come up live now with the air to ground circuit to monitor the next hour and a half front side pass on Rev 16 and hopefully a successful landing.
Hello, Houston. Ryan is Six teams here. Line clear, Jim. Okay, I have a couple uh, okay, Jim, I... for you. On panel 12, will you get the uh, function switch to range? And on panel 11, update a link, circuit breaker closed. Update link is closed. Function switch to range. Roger. And I'm standing by for your report. And uh, Jim, okay, we got the asset bats on at uh, 103.42. The ED bats are go at 37 volts. Roger, copied asset bats 103.42 and ED bats are good. And I have a PDI. And we were on update. inverter two for a while. Copied, you were on inverter two. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Just uh, for a little while. India, 2466. Dita 231, plus 56, niner, niner, zero, over. Copy, uh, 104.172466 plus 56990 for 231. Good read back. Okay, was that 56991 or zero, Jim? 56990. Okay. Uh, do we have an uplink, Jim? Roger, if uh, you have poo, if you go to data, we'll send you some uplinks. Okay, you have it. Poo and data. Okay, they're on their way. Ryan, this is Houston uh, with a, f a few words for you uh, on RCS and uh, ignition. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Roger, John, you can anticipate a slight roll transient at ignition because of uh, CG position. And on the RCS, of course, we'll want normal configuration. And your RCS quantity, system A, is off because of the uh, high pressure in that system off by about 13%, 13% more than, than indicated. Understand. Do you have a verb 33 on the disky? That's affirmative. Okay. Let's do an enter on that. We've lost high bit rate. We have verb one more, 33 we, one more up length to send. Okay.
Ryan, will you turn the uh, function switch off? Function is off. Roger. Uh, which one, Jim? That's the S-band functions. All of them? No, negative. The, uh, the one, the ranging switch. Okay, it's going off. Ryan, this is Houston. We want battery three off now. Roger. Uh, Roger. To put a little more load on uh, our, on the ass and bats. Roger. Battery three is off. Roger. Uh, Jim, could we y'all ride a little bit and point that on me right at you? Would that help? Stand by. Why don't you uh, put in that yaw maneuver, yaw right 20 degrees, that might help. Roger. There's yaw right 20. Roger. Ken, how about reading that up to me and I'll copy it down. Uh, looks like we're getting good data now. Charlie, stand by. We're up linking now.
Okay, Jim, uh, I think we'll start, uh, John says we'll start the PDI from uh, zero y'all since the Omni's pointed right at you. That'd be better for you? Stand by. Okay, Orion, we're finished with your computer. Okay. Okay, Orion, this is Houston. That zero law, y'all, looks okay. All right, fine, thank you. Call P-63, John. How do you read a box, Jim? Loud and clear. Read loud and clear on box, okay? Yes, sir, John, you're loud and clear. Ten minutes. Okay, let's check the dip configuration card. CB-11, deck of gimbal AC closed. Is closed, index power is closed. Uh, CB-16, display engine override logic closed, that's it. Yeah, go. Staff control all closed except your AEA. All closed except the AEA. Okay, 25 degrees a second. 25 degrees a second. Throttle control, auto commander. Auto commander. Add translation of four jets. Four jets, balance couple on, engine gimbal enabled, descendant command override. Off, off, go. Port port stage reset. Oh. Dead band men, attitude control, three to most control, ping zags auto. Go. Okay. Control. On high mall, landing radar computer, and monitoring the pings, pings guidance, mags mode select, altitude altitude rate. Pressure 1220, ambient pressure 390. Okay. Ryan, you can configure um, for normal RCS configuration now. Okay, system A is on. I do. Hey, Jim, we got RCSA reg light when that went on. The pressures are good, though. I do. Okay, John, we, we, the DET is set. The FPAI zero one one. Trim it up a little bit. If her forty nine twenty, please. Got it, Charlie.
Tanks and tanks are aligned. 410 is set to zero. 400 plus one going in. And the needles deflect. 433. This is Apollo Control while the crew of Orion is going through their pre-descent checklist. A word on the command service module, Casper. The circularization burn was on time. Current orbit is 53.1 by 67.8 nautical miles. Back to Orion. Okay, we're clear down to five minutes. Five, we close the landing radar breaker. Right. a little high, so these weights on the card will probably be doubling for it. Get you up. Hell Earth is your pretty. Ryan, bring uh, battery three on at uh, at minus five. Roger, copy. This is Apollo Control. During the descent phase, all the way to touchdown. module pilot will be reading off numbers out of the computer. Three sets of numbers actually. One, the angle at which the commander should look through a grid on his window toward the landing site. The other numbers have to do with the vertical velocity or descent rate and horizontal rates. These are all coming out of the computer. He reads them to the commander. Back to Orion. Point eight two. Say again the reading on the velocity. Three point eight. Three point four and three point eight. Correct. Flight Director Jerry Griffin taking a final status of all the positions here in the control center for a go for PDI. Ryan, your go for PDI. Roger, go for PDI. Okay, throw for the final trim. Go. Oh. Just out of that dead. Go ahead, enter, there. Go, the watch is set and wound. About a second off here. Okay, set, stand by for two minutes, John. Okay.
they have good. Started at about 10 miles, it looks like. Excellent. Okay, two minutes, master arm on. Minutes, master arm's on, two lights, Houston. Roger, copy, two lights. Think the remote select. 367 is in. Next thing is at 30 seconds, John. Turn the page. Jim, you want us to turn the ranging uh, back on? Negative. Okay. We're in voice back up. Roger. We hit engine arm, then we 30 seconds engine arm goes to descent, and we all hit flank, throw, five, okay, engine arm descent, arm is descent, altitude light, velocity light, okay, there's no LH plus X, okay. No ignition, you start push button if we get LH. LH. Auto LH. Throw. Okay. If it starts, it starts. He says command override is on. Thank you, throttling men. Roger, we copy. Five. Eight decent engine command override. Master arm off. Master arm is coming off. Stand by for throttle up. Thrust to weight is okay. 23, 24, 25, 26. Throttle right up. up. On time. Feel that beauty? Come on. Hmm. Roger, we copy. Okay, thrust the weight is good. 66,000 feet. They were right on. I'm looking at a minute. Hey, Jim, I uh, pitch over. Do you want me to go aft on me or stay forward? Stay forward, and you've got to go at one. Roger. Hey, we're way high, John. we got to get down. Way high on the H dot. Oh, that's put it, Charlie. Down to 45 already. That's like this. Ryan, I have a 169. Double H dot, almost. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. Plus zero zero eight zero zero. Plus zero zero eight zero zero. Hundred feet, you know. And you have a go for it. Excuse me, John. Okay, that's entered. That's entered. That's and you're two going to. Some 180 miles to go to the landing site. Y'all out here at three. Off the. Might take that out when we get it. Oh, right. Eggs and pinks are tracking right on, Jim. Roger. Within a tenth of a foot a second. Roger.
Pressures are holding good in the yep. Full oxidized pressure looks good. Ryan, you go at three. Three. Roger, go at three. Hundred and thirty-five miles downrange. And there's still thirty-seven volts, uh, Jim. Roger, we copy. Lost two lights out, Charlie. Okay. Wrong transmitter, probably. We got a. Locked on him. Thousand him. Way. Cutting out, Charlie. I'd say there's no way to to get the altitude light at this high. Ryan, you go at four. For 50,000. Look at that. Altitude and velocity lights are out at 50K. Isn't that amazing? Copy that, Houston? We copy. Look at that data, Houston. 90 miles to go. You want to accept it? Okay, you have a go to accept. Horizontal velocity, 3,200 feet per second. Hey, it's in. Roger. Descending at 112 feet per second. Eggs and things will be getting off a little bit now, too, now. Updates. In five minutes. Coming in like gangbusters. Ryan, you go at five. Roger. Thirty-nine thousand. Hey, look at that. Hundred. 136 feet difference now. 8,000 feet radar. Eggs is tracking about 1,000 high. Match. You get there. Six minutes, we should be at 32,000. And uh, I can quite be back on profile, but almost. Ryan, you go at six. Damage. 45% right on. Roger. Right on. on, on. Thirty nine miles to go. Passing through thirty three thousand feet. Yeah, at six thirty should be at uh, thirty thousand. Mark it, 32,000, 30, okay, looking good, John. The angle's getting down there. Throttle down, seven, six, six, three. Right on. Get it now. Understand, seven, twenty-three. Roger. And seven minutes, seven. mark it. Seven minutes. Right go. 104 down, 28,000. Still about a thousand high, it looks like. Oh, it's starting to look pretty good. Yeah. Two, two, three. Put, setting up ready. The ag's ready at 14K. Then I go a 360 and then turn the camera on. Breaker is in. Bottle down. On time. Sixteen, it? 16 miles to go. Jim. Loud and clear. Okay. You were clipping a little bit, John. Okay. Mm 
21,000. Coming up on eight minutes. Ryan, you're going eight. Back to see the landing site from here, Charlie. Amazing. Okay. Go at eight. John's got a visual. We copy. 130. We're right on, John. Right, right back on profile. How does it look to you? You're right in there. Okay, standing by to update the ag. Got a little roll staring here. Monitor descent one. Monitor descent one. Hey Jim, we got about the three degree roll command in. Right here. Okay, enter. Three six zero minus zero one seven two. Zero enter. Three six seven is coming up. And I'm starting the clock, I mean the uh, camera. Go at nine. Okay, hey, we're out of 12,000, John. Go at nine, coming down at 182, a little steep. Okay, hey, well, we're gonna be right on, or just about right on, maybe 10 feet, 10,000 feet. Stand by. Be okay, 64 at 8,200, pro, over. Pitch over. Huh? And here it is, Gator, Lone Star. Right oh, on. Oh, I'll be the same, Charlie. Okay, 40 degrees, 38 degrees. Right Down on. on dock, north ray. Okay. Looks like we're going to be able to make it, John. There's not too many blocks up there. Ryan, you go okay, for landing. Okay, uh, 4,000 feet. Four, you four, go for landing. 42 LPD. 40. Okay, 3,900 feet. Okay, two to the south, Charlie. Okay. It's in. Okay, 42, 41 LPD, 30,000 feet on profile. Okay, there's, uh, we're coming right down. Uh, it's going to be a little past. Uh, okay, four, 41 LPD. Okay. 2,000 feet, 60 on profile. Okay. Okay, 42 LPD. A couple of more in. 1,400 feet, 44, down, looking good. Get out of 1,000 feet, right. right on profile. 54 LPD, dropping out the bottom now. 800 feet, 30 down. Okay, hey, Houston, we're going to be just a little long. Roger. But uh, we're just now beam uh, double spot. Copy. Okay. 23, 22 down at 500 feet. The big blocks over here to the left, John. Okay, 300 feet, 15 down. Okay. Okay. Take over, Charlie. Okay. Okay, fuel is good, 10%. That comes a shadow. Okay, 200 feet, 11 down. Give me a couple of clicks up. Okay, five down at 130 feet. Two forward. Okay. Omar, Griffin, okay, looking good. Perfect place over here, John. A couple of big boulders. Not too bad. Okay, 80 feet, down at three. Looking super. There's dust. Okay, down at three. 50 feet, down at four. Give me one click up. Okay, backing up slightly. Okay, two down. Stand by for contact. I'm going to let her down. You level off. Let her on down. Okay, 76%. Plenty fat. Contact. Stop. Boom. Throw. Engine arm. Wow! Oh, man! Throw. Engine arm. He finished command on run. Okay, okay 413. Check the app. Now we don't have to walk far to pick up blocks. You can hear a burn up. Open, close, open, close. Oh, the run is finally here, Houston. Fantastic. Yeah, and, uh, I can look right out to the left and see. Let's go aft, Omni, or Ryan. Double spot, and we're about. Uh... Okay, you got it. 
Okay, we're better. forward to the north, of, forward and to the north of double spot. I would guess about uh, 200 meters to the north and uh, maybe 150 meters to the to the uh, west. Not flatlands, though, Houston. Roger, I copy 200 meters north like of double spot and about Cooper, 150 though, meters west. Yeah, and I could see the, I could see all the way to the ground, just like flying the LTV. Piece of cake. That's good. Asset pressures look good. Okay, asset helium monitor cycle. I did. O2. Asset. Fantastic. Percy Precision is planted one on the planes of Descartes. Well, camera stop. I better go easy on this landing radar Zerger bigger, huh? Yeah. Don't. Okay, that's the right one. The camera's off. Uh-huh. And it sure ain't flat, John. Wow, there's that ridge to the north. Yep, sure oh. is. All we got to do is jump out the hatch and we got plenty of rock. Houston, uh, boy, it sure looks like you can make, uh, I see a uh, crown crater from here. I can see a uh, ray crater from here. Not a boy. Almost that apoplexy, that program alarm, and that's your radar breaker. Charlie's, Charlie's about, <laughs> Charlie's got nothing but a ridge to look at. That well, sounds beautiful, John. Wish I were there. There's a ridge out in There's one, there's a ridge out in front of us too, John. Yeah, there's a ridge in front of us, one to the side of us. And my guess is that we're in a subdued old crater that's got a lot more craters. Why did we copy? What a neat place. <laughs> Okay, Jim, this ridge in front of us uh, does look like a subdued crater, and it maybe is a, a raised rim about 50 meters in front of us, about, uh, oh, uh, four or five meters tall. That about 30 or 40 percent of the surface is covered with boulders uh, that are uh, maybe a half a meter in size uh, uh, on out in front of us and to the right. <clears throat> Where we landed, there were... Hey, man, Charlie. We got to stay, Houston? Stand by. Everything's looking okay up to this point, John. We'll give you a final word here shortly. Okay, yeah, we were coming down pretty good until I hit the stop button, and then it fell out. out. Oh, the engine stopped. I know exactly what you mean. It's really nice to have your shout out there. Uh, that's a good help. It's a good altitude to the gouge. Oh, that was super. Thanks for the update. Got in. Batteries all looking good. EPS is looking good. SN quantities are looking. The way these uh, blocks are laid in here out my window, I guess they come from South Ray. There's some biggies out there. We've got uh, right out in front of us about 100 meters at my 10:30 position. I've got one that must be uh, three meters across. Orion, your stay for T1. Understand? Okay, uh, stay for T1, T68, John, and I'll get the eggs going. 414 plus two is in. 400 to four. Hey, Jim, that, that's off in a case of beer to Fido. I'll tell you, that targeting was just beautiful. Boy, oh, you guys just started us right in there. That was the verb. Very okay. good. It, where it says we are, I believe it. Hey, Jim, our 943s are minus... Uh, Eight nine six. We have them, 15, Charlie. Five, two. The engine stop reset. The engine stop reset. Okay, pro. Pro. Call P twelve. One in there, Charlie. Okay.
Okay, take time for T2 is uh, 104. Plus uh, 42. Plus 16, 64. Those numbers are good. Those numbers are good? Yep. Yep. Any. Oh. Auto. Auto. Pro. Okay. Ping smoke control. Now 33. You got six minutes. We're counting down. Why? Right, it's really a nice place. Feel that one six G, Charlie. Nice. Restraint harness has got me anchored. Oh, that's what's the trouble with. It acts as set 410. Standing by. <laughs> oh, that was a soup. It's about level. We're not going to have a bit of trouble getting it. No, it's going to be neat. Here off. But it sure is not, it's not a uh, smooth, uh, it's not that FF smooth, you Say again, John. Say it's not that FF smooth. We're in the middle of a block field. Roger See, there's a, a crown crater up there. But they're in little blocks. He, he may have squashed a few. And, uh, Jim, we got crown crater out uh, John's left window about uh, 9 o'clock. Roger. And just looking at it from here, I don't think the rover's going to have any trouble going up that hill. Glad to hear that. Could be wrong. Slopes tend to fool you. It, it looked good going north right, too. There were some big blocks on the rim, but not, the track just looked good. Looked good, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Camera ramp. Turn on the water for a second, Charles. Okay. That's a good idea. That shadow's not as long as I thought it was going to be. It's like we're right on top of the ground. Yeah, we didn't, we dropped very far. Yeah, we got a lot of rocks, that's for sure. How's it looking, Jim? Still looking good. We're just standing by here. I wish for... I could tell you what kind of rock. I wish I could tell you what kind of rocks those are, Houston. But some of them are very white. And oh God, if I could see, I'm not close enough to them. But uh, and uh, I see one white one with some black. Uh, can't tell whether that's dirt or not on it. But it could be a white breccia. Leave such a thing. We copy. Every one of them are angular too, John. Yeah, they're all angler. They're out of South Ray, I believe. There's a right over there. Without any dust on it at all. Got about 50 minutes. By those three little craters. Okay. Back to Houston. Uh, when I told you that I thought this terrain might be very spectacular, boy, I was just kidding. Yeah. It really is something looking at that mountain. That is a big mountain, Charlie. Yeah, we're within two minutes, John. Let's... I agree with you. It is really. That's not straight. That big bright. That's it. Uh, Ryan, you're stay for T2. Bye. Okay. Thank Super. you. Super. Stay for T2. Okay. Uh, let's go to Poo and then ICSPTT. Okay, Charlie, when you get the uh, surface checklist, I have some changes that we want to take care of. Stand by. There probably are a few, aren't there? Yeah, there are a few, and we'll have a few more in order to conserve power to give you maximum stay time. Outstanding. Yeah, that 160 is a lot nicer when you take the restraint harness off. Uh, Houston, will we go for dips, uh, Vince? That's affirmative. Go ahead.
Okay, Houston, master arms on, two lights. Right here. Descent vents. Descent vents far. Roger. This is Apollo Control, unofficial touchdown time, 104.29.36, ground elapsed time. Okay, go ahead. Close uh, descent reg one. Descent reg one, close. Charlie, do you say you're ready to copy the changes? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay, on one dash two, in the uh, the right column there, about halfway down, the S yes band pitch and yaw set. You can scratch that. And the business about peak. In other words, uh, we're going to stay with the Omni. Over. Uh, okay, I copy. Okay, the next change is on one dash three, down at the uh, the bottom of the page in the battery reconfiguration. Instead of battery two off, we want battery three off reset. Next line down, uh, battery L should be uh, CDR instead of LMP. And then, of course, the talkback should be CDR after that. Next line down should be battery four off reset. Over. Okay, we copy all that. Bat 3, all preset. Uh, bat uh, Looney to uh, Commander, Talkback Commander. Bat 4, uh, all preset. Over. Okay, then the next page is on Circuit Breakers 1-4. The uh, first change is uh, on the first row there on panel 11, S-band antenna. Third one down there from the left should be open. And then uh, on the second row, when mission timer on the uh, second row should be open and then drop down to uh, the fourth row LGC Disky should be open okay copy yes band antenna open first row second row mission timer open uh, third row uh, fourth nothing fourth row LGC Disky open that's correct. Okay, next page, one dash five. Is that five. everything? No, I've got one, a uh, couple more probably. Okay, on one dash five, on the uh, the fourth row, panel 16, inverter two, open. Over. Okay, inverter two open. Uh, we got inverter two powering the AC right now. Okay, uh, well, part of our power saving program is to uh, uh, not have the AC powered up on the surface. Okay, that's fine. And the next change. Somebody's got it. And the last change is on page one dash seven. On the right column there, uh, about four lines down, we want in inverter. Instead of inverter two, we want inverter off. Over. Okay, we copy inverter off. And then uh, last change is on one dash eight, the left column. We want uh, track mode off, and S band should be to best omni, which I believe is the one you have selected right now. Okay, we get track mode off, S band to best, Omni. Yeah, and that's the end of the, the changes up to that point. Okay, Jim, uh, we're going to press on with the first rev uh, checklist. Yes, go ahead uh, and uh, be advised that your uh, stars should be good as published. Uh, that sounds pretty good. Okay, Orion, I have uh, some more changes to that surface checklist whenever uh, it's convenient for, you, for someone to copy.
This is Apollo Control, and Orion is safely on the ground at Descartes. Having landed at 104.29.36, ground elapsed time. In local time, that's 8.23 p.m. Time of landing. Not too far away from uh, the planned landing point. After uh, the crew has a chance to power down the lunar module, do some housekeeping, they will uh, have a sleep period which will begin at about 107 hours, about 2 hours and 10 minutes from now, with EVA, for EVA 1 starting tomorrow morning at about 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. This is Apollo Control at 104.51. Call us to sleep first. Well, that suits us. You probably gathered we'd like to. So would we. Yeah, it's been a hard day's night for you, too. You deserve a good sleep. But Jim, I feel exactly like I thought I was. I really want to get out, but I think the discretion's the better part of the valor here. Good. Glad you glad you think that. Man, it's really tempting though. It really looks nice out there. Okay, Jim, if you uh, didn't get on my uh, 047 on the X was plus 37566, 053 was minus 73667. Give me those values again, Charlie. I didn't copy them. Plus 37566 minus 73667. Roger, I copy. Okay, Orion, we're ready to terminate the vent on the oxide. Okay, it's going close. Ox vents, barber pole. Roger. Uh, Jim, would you like to, guys like to uh, take uh, uh, one amp uh, worth of power and let me see if I can get this terrible going? Uh, that landing might have uh, knocked something loose. Stand by. Track Charlie's village, we know that. After you fly with Navy pilots for three years, you know you know what the feeling is. Yeah, I know it exactly. I think we'd like t for you to try to get the uh, the steerable up if you can. All right, we'll do that. Okay, Jim, uh, it uh, didn't work. Uh, I was looking at the shadow, and the pitch uh, goes around nicely. Uh, you can watch it move. It oscillates quite a bit before it damps, uh, but the yaw, I can't get to move at all, so I guess it's uh, belly up. Okay, and we assume you got all the necessary circuit breakers in, AC and DC. Roger, I put the S AC bus uh, 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 S-band in, and I put the S-band com in, and the pitch moves fine, but the uh, yaw does not move. Okay, we copy. I'm going to power it back down. Okay. Okay, and uh, Charlie, when you get a chance, if you're free, we, I can give you the, the rest of the, the changes coming up here in the next few hours. Okay, uh, John is uh, marking on out here, and go ahead, I'll copy. Okay, uh, I don't want you to, you know, introduce any light there. It might help hurt John, but uh, the first change and... Uh, we're recommending perhaps you want to tear out a blank sheet of, uh, of paper there so you can write down the sequences and the page number of these things uh, so you won't be confused. It just so happens the back of the data card book is blank. Uh, go ahead. Okay, uh, sequence number one is on uh, page 1-9, uh, and uh, 
That's configure cam and for stay, and that should occur at about uh, 105.10. And if you look at page 1-9, if you have it handy, over. Stand by. Okay, I got it. Okay, you're aware that you won't have your mission timer, so we're going to have to keep you on time here. But uh, if you see the eat period there in the right column? We want to skip that until you all get your suits off. And then we, uh, the next sequence is uh, number two, of course, and that's on page 2-1. And you can turn to that page, and that should occur at about 105.38, and we'll keep you on time. And at the, uh, so that's cabin prep for EVA, just to get things stowed properly. And then at the bottom of 2-1, go to page 3-4. Over. Okay, copy. 2-1, uh, then finish that page and go to the 3-4. That's right, and then, of course, uh, sequence 3 is on page 3-4, and that's Doff Suits. And that Doff Suits should occur at about 105.58. And uh, at that point, uh, you all be in a position there where you can eat, and we can brief you on, uh, on the rest of the uh, surface plan. Over. Right, that sounds super, Jim. Uh, we'll press on with that. that uh, those changes, and uh, uh, in this briefing, we'd like a word about what our lunar stay looks like, and et cetera. I'm okay, sure you're we understand. Get all that. For some reason, it's remarkable, but once you sit down up here, the calm just clears up beautifully. Very good. Okay, let's terminate the uh, the fuel vent, Orion. Right here. Okay, you said you want a target? Stand by. Roger, go ahead and torque, Orion. They look very Triangle good. Triangle difference was minus. Okay. Boy, these are really neat optics. Uh, the, the Earth is in the window, and I'm looking right at the star. That's really good. Orion, this is Houston. I have some parking angles for you for the IMU. Roger, go. Okay, X is 286.25. Y is all zeros. Z is 087.57. Over. 286.25. All balls, 087.57. That's good readback. Okay, Jim, uh, my 544 and 5 through 546, 544 changed quite a bit. It's minus now 0.116, 545 is plus 052, 546 is minus 0 0.068. That was after the cal. Before the cal, there were plus 006, plus 045, minus 088. Over. Roger, I have them, Charlie. And I guess we're ready for the e-memory dump. Stand by. Stay with you. Okay, we're ready for the uh, e-memory dump. It's on its way. Roger. And Jim, that uh, eggs the lunar line for a couple of minutes there, put me within about uh, less than a a half a degree from the ping. Roger, we copy. Orion, your stay for T3. Roger, stay for T3. This is Apollo Control. Uh, 105 hours, 6 minutes. Power down. Okay, I copy. We've had loss of signal from the uh, command module Casper as it 
went behind the moon. During that front side pass, the command module pilot, Ken Mattingly, uh, was passed some flight plan updates for the orbital science phase of the mission. Orion, meanwhile, at Descartes landing site, is going through the post-landing checklist, all the power down procedures to conserve electrical power, and we're still up and live at 10506. You really want to do this, don't you, Houston? Uh, go ahead, Orion. Ryan, this is uh, Houston. Say again. It works. It worked. What was that, John? What worked? It goes right into gimbal lock. Okay. Good. Good show. Yeah, I thought you'd like that. That's a sad feeling just to watch that thing go over. And uh, Jim, the old ED bats are hanging in there at 37 each. Okay, we copy, and I have uh, T-17 through T-21 when you're ready to copy. Go ahead. Okay, T-17, 10625-05.65, T-18, 108-23, 36.87 T19 110 plus 22 plus 08.13 T20 112 plus 20 plus 39.04 T21 114 plus 19 plus 10.65 over Okay, T-17-106-25, plus 0, 5, 6, 5. 7, 18 is 108 23 36 87. 19 is 110 22 20 is 112 20 29 04. 21 is 114 hours 19 minutes and 10.65 seconds. Good read back. Uh, Jim, I got a question for you. I'm on page uh, 1 5. Uh, my circuit breaker power down. Uh, row 3, it has us uh, pushing in the, uh, leaving the primary S band and the comm power amp and transmitter receiver closed. We have them open right now. Uh, what would you prefer? Stand by. Okay, Charlie, leave those open. Uh, Roger. And also the S-band antenna is open, and I'll leave that open. Uh, how about the cabin fan control? Do uh, you guys want that one closed? Stand by. Uh, Ryan, uh, go ahead and open that cabin fan control. Roger, it's open. Uh, Jim, uh, in my 2 o'clock position, uh, about uh, right on the rim of that little ridge we described earlier, there's a uh, fresh little crater that uh, is about uh, 10 meters across. And uh, it uh, is just loaded with uh, little uh, 30, 40 centimeter blocks around it. Over. Okay, we copy. Looks like uh, you can see these blocks in the uh, walls of that little crater. It looks like the thing is going to be pretty blocky uh, in the regolith. Roger, we copy. And Houston, it uh, really is bright outside. Uh, the, uh, uh, the surface looks almost white to me. Okay, Jim, we're about to power down the AC. Roger. 
You want these base the heaters on high, Houston? Stand by. Stand by, we're thinking about it. Roger, uh, Orion, keep the Mesa heaters on high. Mesa heaters on high. This is Apollo Control at 105 hours, 20 minutes. Uh, here in Mission Control, we've completed a shift handover. Uh, Flight Director Pete Frank has relieved uh, Flight Director Jerry Griffin. And we will have a change of shift uh, press briefing in about 15 minutes. Uh, this briefing will be held in the main auditorium, Building 1. And that's about 15 minutes uh, from now. The crew aboard Orion on the lunar surface at uh, Descartes at the present time is uh, uh, completing their post-landing checklist, uh, getting the lunar module configured so that they can begin a rest period. Uh, prior to their first extravehicular activity. Uh, the original flight plan had called for them to begin EVA immediately after landing. However, because of the landing three revolutions late, uh, or approximately six hours later than planned, uh, the uh, crew suggested and uh, Mission Control concurred that it would be uh, wiser to have them uh, try to get some sleep before going out onto the lunar surface. The flight planning is progressing uh, an hour at a time, uh, a page at a time on the flight plan, and, uh, and a day at a time. Uh, right now, uh, we're planning for the first EVA to be uh, essentially uh, a normal EVA. Uh, there has been some discussion of uh, possibly curtailing uh, or uh, deleting EVA-3. However, no decision has been reached uh, on this at the present time. Something you did just caused a lot of noise down here. We turned the power amp off. We brought you the pad and the big rig to the net load distribution. Okay, Ryan, you better uh, get the power amp back on so we can hear you a little better. How are you reading that, Jim? Uh, loud and clear, Charlie. Okay, we'll leave the power amp on, uh, uh, to, or in secondary. Uh, do you want the function switch to range? As the checklist calls, it's an off reset now. Stand by. Okay, Ryan, uh, you can go to range on that. This is Apollo Control at 105 hours, 28 minutes. Uh, we're about 22 minutes away from reacquiring the uh, command module, CASPER. The lunar module on the surface is in a stable configuration. Everything looks good at this time. Uh, we're presently ready to begin the change of shift news briefing in the main auditorium at the Manned Spacecraft Center, Building 1. Uh, we'll switch to that at this time. This is Apollo Control at 106 hours, 53 minutes. During our change of shift news briefing, uh, we've had a pretty steady... Uh, flow of conversation with the crew. Uh, initially, uh, John Young, while they were going through the uh, post-landing checklist, getting the lunar module configured for their stay and for the sleep period, uh, Young reported that they had a uh, an O2 SEP light. Uh, this is a light that uh, would indicate uh, some sort of a problem with the water separators, and there are uh, two of them on the lunar module, only one of which is required at any time. Uh, these remove uh, moisture from the atmosphere of the LEM cabin by uh, centrifuging the moisture uh, out of the uh, air 
It's a spinning uh, blade type device that uh, spins the moisture out. And in looking at the data, we on the ground were able to see that the uh, separator had slowed down uh, quite a bit. In fact, it almost stopped its rotation. Uh, the initial reaction was that uh, perhaps there had been a slug of water in the uh, suit circuit, and this uh, large slug of water had uh, simply bogged the, uh, the separator down. Uh, we had the crew switch to the secondary or to the uh, second separator and got the same indication. Uh, after going through a, uh, a bit of troubleshooting, uh, it uh, appeared that perhaps uh, uh, there was a blockage in the system, but not, uh, not water. Uh, we didn't have any indication of water in the hoses when the crew uh, upended the uh, suit hoses. Nothing ran out of them. And uh, uh, by going through a series of uh, different configurations, uh, it was determined that uh, the uh, check valve, cabin check valve, uh, was apparently not working properly. And uh, by uh, ch simply changing the position of this valve, which is perfectly acceptable, uh, we were able to get rid of the problem. Uh, you'll hear this, uh, uh, this situation discussed with the crew and uh, uh, also hear the uh, uh, resolution of the problem. And uh, we see no, uh, uh, no impact to the mission as a result of this. Uh, the LEM Telemu uh, controller uh, said that we would uh, we would be able to get by with the uh, situation as it was, and it would cause no problem. Uh, also, we've had uh, quite a bit of description of the lunar surface out the window uh, from both Duke uh, and Young. And at the present time, the crew is uh, preparing to begin their first meal on the lunar surface prior to beginning the uh, sleep period. Uh, we'll play back the accumulated tape that uh, we have uh, uh, stacked up. Uh, about 35 minutes of it, and uh, then get caught up and uh, continue to follow conversations live. Uh, uh, Jim, uh, Houston, over. Go ahead, Charlie. Direction. Yeah. Orion. Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah. Uh, it's a long day here. Uh, uh, could, yeah, could we dock the suits before we do the cabin configuration and all? Okay, that's fine with us, uh, with us Charlie. Go ahead. Oh, hello there, uh, Tony. Yeah, well, yeah, good evening, fellas. Outstanding job. Thank really you. nice. Dan, where do you see the rocks of this place? I've been listening to you. It sounds great. Tony, it's going to be enough to make a geophysicist sit up and grow. Ha, <laughs> uh, ha, you've already done that. You never seen so many rocks. You never, you never seen so many rocks, Tony. Some biggies, too. Uh, it really sounds fine. I'm getting green again. I tell you, I wasn't green about three hours ago. I'd say you all earned your pay today. Well, those guys in the trenches that figured out all that earned their pay today, I'll tell you that. Hey, Tony, tell John Covington up that this thing is a piece of cake compared to his lightweight uh, training unit. <laughs> okay, I'll sure do that. He's running around here somewhere. Okay. You, you should see Charlie just picked up his 130-pound backpack with one hand. And be advised, Tony, we changed our mind on docking suits. Uh, since we got some stuff behind the uh, engine, uh, uh, ascent engine, we're going to go through the normal configuration. We're doing the cabin uh, configuration for stay now. Okay, we copy that. Okay, uh, Houston, we're down to uh, get rid of the armrest. Time we get this just back full, I don't know if we're going to be able to open the door. All right, I know what you mean. Okay, uh, Tony, my passive, uh, my personal dosimer reads uh, 21109er. Okay, 21109er. 
Uh, when I went through that dead up in business, I felt like I was throwing away half the cabin. Minus 22050, Houston. Okay, 22050. Okay, uh, Houston, uh, before we do the ETV part of the cab prep, we are going to take a suit off. Okay. If we'd been smart, we'd have took them off at the first part of this thing. <laughs> uh, before you get your suits off there, you may want to bring that 500 millimeter uh, forward from behind the engine uh, cover there. Uh, Tony, we're ahead of you. We already did that, and uh, we got everything out from back here, and I'm putting up the ISS now, and uh, we'll be, uh, John's getting his stuff off. Good show. Okay, Tony, we got three of us in here now. John's out of his suit. And I assume all three are walking around. No, not exactly. One of them is sort of lying here. Uh, Tony, uh, y'all getting uh, high bit rate data here now? Uh, yes, we do, Charlie. Okay, John should be back up here. Okay, I read you, Tony. There you go, John. I guess uh, our opinion of this operation uh, right about here is that uh, is that the coolant is really uh, marginal in the suits, and we'd like to get permission to get a shot of cold water through the suit loop there, there, uh, even with the power down situation, to keep us from sweating so much. Would that be okay? When are we doing something in the suit work in the cabin? Okay, we have to talk about that here. Yeah, there's no problem with that, John. Well, thank you. Just a shot, you know, maybe 30 seconds worth of the clip. All right, Houston. Go ahead, Tony. Okay, on your cabin gas return, we'd like to go to auto. Roger, auto on the cabin gas return. Okay, and on the suit gas diverter to cabin. Okay, it's push cabin. Okay. Okay, Houston, we've got an ECS H2 SEP light. Isn't that because we're, we've got to go to SEP 2 or something while we're in this boat? Copy down, we're working it. Yeah, the uh, suit gas diverter valve is chattering and it's making a sort of a purr. Okay, John, we'd like you to switch water separators. Okay, we're in full to step two. Okay. Okay, we still got a water separate light in here. Okay, we copy that. We got the, uh, let me tell you what our configuration is here. We're in full step two. The cab gas return is in auto. We're on primary uh, live cartridge. The suit trigger release is in auto. We're in uh, push the cabin, and our hoses are stowed against the bulkhead. Okay, we copy that. Okay, John, uh, separator speed is slowly climbing up there. It looks like it, it'll make it up all right. It's just a bit slow. Okay, for it. All right, Houston. Speak, Tony. Okay, I think uh, they're thinking you may have the water in the hose problem. They'd like you to drain the hoses down towards the floor. Maybe we can uh, get some of that out of there. We'd also like you to hold your hand over the blue hose and make sure you're getting good flow. Okay, 
Okay, Tony, I'm back up. How do you read? Five by Tony. Okay, uh, this ECS, uh, on the push to cabin, uh, it uh, sounds like to me that it's, there's a, uh, a flapper valve or something chattering back in there that uh, uh, is uh, sort of sta perhaps stagnating the flow in the loop. Yeah, that's what it sounds like to me, too. Okay, are you getting flow out of the blue hose? Uh, that's affirmative. We're getting it out of there, but I feel the same way that Charlie does. It, it's got something uh, trapped in there. Okay. And it's, it's, it's coming out in pulses. Matter of fact, I I make it play. I I make it play what it sounds like for you. Now, what what you hear there is the microphone is the mic right up against the hose and the hose. Uh, Going against the microphone. It's not a constant thing. It's just sort of chattering, like some valve in there is uh, not doing its thing. All right, we heard that, uh, John. Charlie's is the same way. Okay, John, we'd like to go back to egress on the suit gas diverter and give us a mark when you do it. Okay, three, two, one, mark. Okay, that's egress on a suit gas diverter. Okay. Flow's good in suit gas diverter. Okay, we copy. Okay, we understand all your noise went away. Yeah, it doesn't chatter anymore in the in the uh, push the cap valve. Okay. Okay, the suit separator light is off now, of course. Okay. Charlie's got the 500 all configured and it works. Which I'm not surprised since it was stowed like it was expected to hit like a, hit a lot harder than we could. Okay. One of those 30G uh, bags. Nice to have a camera work. Okay, John, it's your convenience. We'd like to go back to step one. Uh, you got it. Okay. Okay, uh, Houston, I'm up to uh, frame number 30 on the uh, bag A, Charlie's camera. And I just finished shooting uh, sort of a partial pan out the front window. Man, this place is, uh, it's, it's, it's not anywhere flat around here. Very good, John. 8.30. It's, ro it's rolling terrain, and I, I really don't believe we're going to have any trouble at all getting up on the side of that hill, although the uh, slopes, I don't know, I mean, the slopes up toward the crowd look like maybe 20 degrees. We're going to have to take that very carefully. Uh, what that about first the first is pretty, uh, it's like about 10 degrees, but from there up to uh, Cinco and Echo, it gets rather steep there. How about Boulder? It is just like, uh, it is like we described, it's very bitchy. Uh, on Stone, stone mountain. Right, the boulders. Uh, well, we landed in a block field, you know. Right. Can you see any up on stone? Uh, no, sure don't. Yeah, maybe there is. When we get closer to it, we'll be able to tell better. I see some funny shadows up on top of it. Any problem with the traffic ability out on the EGA uh, one direction? Uh, it's going to be a piece of cake, I think. Beautiful. Uh, Tony, 
Tony, the problem is it looks like finding a flat spot to deploy the ALSEP. Uh, it's just hummocky uh, rolling terrain with uh, four or five uh, uh, meter uh, ridges. Yeah, 100 meters from here is going to be on the side of a hill. Uh, right, that, we could probably put it over the left there, John. Uh, to, uh, Tony, I looked out uh, down at about 4,000 feet, uh, assessed the North Ray area. Uh, there were some b large blocks, uh, maybe 5% uh, uh, of the surface up around the rim. But as you look back towards Palmetto, they really uh, petered out in a hurry. And I think we're going to be in good shape going that way. Good job. One final comment here until I get back to work. Uh, about uh, in my uh, 1 o'clock position, about 30 meters out, just beyond the limb shadow, well, about twice as far as the limb shadow, there is a secondary crater with a large uh, meter-sized block still in it. It looks like it formed the secondary, and it's uh, got black and white. Uh, uh, the top uh, 3% or 5% of the block is uh, black and white, and apparently below that is solid white. Over. Very good. And those black and white blocks, uh, you can see them all over the place. Is the crater uh, round or is it oblong? Can you get a direction? Yeah, it looks like to me it came from South Ray. It's oblong, uh, uh, stoved in uh, towards uh, Palmetto, just like those ones down at the Cape that uh, they dug out with a bulldozer. I guess I have to stick to my earlier uh, guess that we were about uh, maybe uh, 200 meters north and 100 meters long past the uh, double spot, the northernmost crater of it. But we'll see as soon as we get out, because this is the first place I was ever at on geology trip that I thought I knew where I was when it started. Ah, uh, come on, you always got it. After about two or three hours, we always got it. Are you through with your cabin prep there? Charlie's loading the ETB. Can't but one guy do that at a time because uh, it's too crowded over here. Uh, okay. Uh, the one thing we would like you to see if you could decide before you get out is where you would put Alpha. Well, we'll keep looking at it, but uh, we'll see if we can get it. The trouble is, uh, right in front of us, about 50 meters, there's a ridge. And I don't know what's on the other side of that ridge. Uh, out about 100 meters, I can see a lot of blocks. And, uh, but I can't tell whether there are craters out there or not because we're at zero phase. And, uh, I just don't think we can make a prediction at this point. Okay, we copy that. Those blocks around South Ray are about the, the, the widest blocks I've ever seen. They're around the rim of that one. Okay, and John, uh, about the time we saw that separator spin down, we saw a rise in the suit loop pressure. We'd like you to confirm that you connected the suit, the suit hoses, blue to blue and red to red. Let's throw it on the wall. Uh, Tony, uh, that's affirmative, blue to blue and red to red. Okay. That was on the wall. Now they're disconnected. The blues are disconnected at this point. Okay, we got Put your mind at rest a little bit about EVA-1. We're looking at a pretty nominal EVA-1. We'll probably give you some new targets for the UV camera. Okay. We can do that real time. And we won't have the TV when you get out. We'll get it when you get the crew up. But otherwise, it looks pretty, pretty nominal right now. Roger, Tony. Okay, Tony, I've got the EVA maps out and it's active. As I can see, gather here, we got uh, two uh, two maps and one return chart. Is that what you agree with? Okay.
Taylor work at a second. Okay, Charlie, that looks good here. Okay, I'm going to leave the, uh, optimistically leave the walk in Traverse map in the cabin. All right. Okay, Tony, the uh, ETB stowed over uh, in my corner. Okay, very good. And you know, in training, I could barely lift this thing, and it's one six, it's one finger. That just tells me we should do more work on the moon. Well, I'll say. Uh, how's ECS looking to you now, Tony? Right now, it's looking pretty good. Okay, Tony, we've uh, done all of your uh, sequence here. Uh, we got the suits off and stowed, uh, the cabin configured, and I guess we're ready to go to the heat and then uh, bed down, okay? Okay, I've got a little bit of a uh, checklist change I'd like to read up to you here when you're ready. It's in the uh, surface checklist. Go ahead. Okay, uh, this debriefing with Houston uh, will be at 10628. The time now is 10635, so we're real close on that. Your heat period is to start at 10643. And then the plus no 2 and H2O recharge will skip. The feed water recharge will skip. And on to the next page, the pre-sleep at 10728 and we'll skip the uh, the computer work there that first line under pre-sleep and the rest period will begin right and the rest period will begin at 10753 and the number eight the next, the next step will be at 11553 that will be post sleep Again, in that section, uh, three quarters of the way down the page, we'll skip uh, the, the computer work. And the heat period will be at 11618. Hey, you lost me, Tony. Uh, okay, here we go on page 37, post sleep. Go ahead. Roger. Post sleep on page 37. Step 8 there, or uh, my number 8, is at 11553. That's post sleep. And then three quarters of the way down that page under post sleep, there's some computer work, Pro Verb 37 Inner. We'll drop all that. Eat period will begin at 116.18. And the last line on that column is top off plus O2, we'll delete. Okay, on uh, the EVA2 planning with Houston, we'll skip all that. And then we'll don suits on the next page, 3-8. We'll don suits at 11703. Okay, and at the end of that page, we'll... Copy. Okay, at the end of that page, we'll go to page 2-5. Okay, uh, okay and we'll uh, prep for EVA-1 at 11753. And then from then on, we're nominal. Okay, at 2-5, what was the time? 117.53. Okay, copy. Let me go through this now. Uh, okay, we've got the PGAs. Uh, we're... Uh, EVA debriefing with Houston comes next. That's step two. Step three is the E period. Okay, Charlie. Turn the page. Step four. Go ahead. Okay, just to get our uh, steps uh, numbered straight here, I guess they're assigning numbers to these things. Uh, the debriefing with Houston is step four. E period is step five. And the times you read were right. And then uh, the pre-sleep is step six, and the, each number goes on from there. Okay, pre-sleep is six. Uh, then we wake up for post-sleep, and that's number uh, seven. Rod. Rest period is number seven. Then we uh, get a... 
Oh, okay. Rest period is seven. I see. Okay. And then eight is uh, post sleep. That's affirmative. And skipping the computer activity stuff. Uh, number nine is the eat period. And we delete the uh, top off the plus. We turn the page. Uh, we uh, skip. Uh, well, we skip EBA two planning. We turn the page, and uh, that's step uh, done. Suits is next. All right, that's number ten. And that's step ten. Okay, then we go to two five, and uh, we're just about back to nominal in. Right, and that's step eleven on two dash five. Copy. Okay, have a good meal. Okay, uh, Tony, let's uh, let's do the debriefing. Uh, we don't really, you know, I'd like to describe uh, for a limb window description. We had so much practice at that, I'd like to see how I could do. I'll have at it. We'll, we'll take any words you've got. We extended all our questions uh, a few minutes ago with uh, John. And in fact, I didn't even have to ask any. He just answered them all. So, but press on. Okay, uh, looking out to uh, 12 o'clock on the horizon, uh, there is a uh, very hilly, uh, subdued ridge, well, let's say hilly uh, terrain at 12 o'clock. It goes on out of view around to 11. It's a rolling with uh, white uh, pockmarked uh, craters uh, there. Uh, and I'd say that's maybe 50 to 100 meters above the surrounding terrain where we are. You move around from 1 to uh, 3 o'clock, uh, approaching the, uh, at about 1 o'clock, I would say we can see maybe a kilometer or so, but it might be very deceiving on that distance. And we see uh, more rolling terrain, similar in albedo. It's the light gray with uh, fresh craters being white. As we come on to 3 o'clock, 2.30 to 3, the near ridge that was on our map so that blocks out uh, North Ray and, uh, and uh, Stone Mountain is uh, a correction. Uh, Smoky is really there, and uh, it's about a, uh, oh, a three to four degree slope, uh, and the ridge maybe goes up uh, 10 to 15 meters. Uh, as we come into the near field at uh, 12 o'clock, uh, it, uh, excuse me, at about, uh, in front of the limb, maybe uh, 50 to 100 meters, there's this other low ridge that we described. Uh, beyond that, we can see a, a, a depression, or a, and then it rises again to another ridge, uh, which is probably uh, a, a goes into a, a Spook uh, Crater. I think I can see Spook uh, on the horizon at about my 12 o'clock position. Uh, as we... Uh, uh, that is uh, boulder covered. The largest boulder I see is perhaps two to three meters in, uh, in uh, width, and they're angular. And uh, those are there are three of those boulders, and one is at 12. The other two are over at about uh, on that uh, second rise away from us at about 1:30. And I'd say those boulders and smaller down to one meter cover maybe one percent of the surface. The trafficability out that way. Uh, looks good as far as the uh, boulders go. It's going to be uh, up and down, though. As we come into uh, 230 from 50 to 150 meters, I've already described that bright uh, fresh crater with the uh, small blocks around it, more cobbles, really. Beyond that, there are two other craters which sort of trend into this uh, depression that runs uh, north-south here. Uh, there's a... Uh, a boulder beyond that at 2.30, which is partially buried. It has a good fillet on the uh, uh, south side. To the north side and to the east side, there's no fillet at all. Uh, as we come on into uh, 3 o'clock in the near field, uh, I see a good-sized crater, perhaps uh, 30 meters to 50 meters, at 2 o'clock on the inboard side. That's my side of this ridge. And uh, we have maybe 10% of the surface covered with blocks, uh, less than half a meter over. Very good, Charlie. Where again was this uh, boulder with the fillet? Uh, it's at about 2:30, uh, and maybe a couple of hundred meters out, and it's on the end, uh, on this side of the ridge uh, that uh, trends east-west here, that blocks out uh, Smoky. 
Okay, could it be sliding down the ridge and that's where the fillet's on the south? Uh, that, that might be the reason. I was just going to say it's a uh, down slope, so that might have been what happened. Very good. Uh, though, uh, though the slope doesn't appear that steep, Tony. Okay. How about the buster? Are you, can you identify that? Well, that's really... Br uh, we sure saw it on descent. Uh, I don't see it right now. There's a uh, bright rate, uh, a bright crater to the right, maybe 50 meters of uh, what I think is Spook, which is probably Buster, but I really wouldn't uh, swear to it. Okay, can you tell Boulder's over there? Uh, there's uh, not a one as far as I can see. Okay. Very good, Charlie. You're right up to your old peak. Uh, coming down on... Okay, coming down, Tony, on descent, uh, it looks, as John has described, uh, there's a distinct ray pattern across our landing site from uh, South Ray. And the boulders uh, get uh, affected and disappear by we get to Palmetto. Uh, and then they don't reappear again until almost the uh, flank of uh, North Ray. Uh, you can see that uh, depression that trends southward out of North Ray, and you can see the uh, uh, the ridge line that I think will be an excellent way to climb up uh, to North Ray, Ray and the Rover. Uh, now this was all from 5,000 feet, so I might be a little uh, uh, off on that, but at least the general impression was good. Uh, we could see Dog Leg, we could see Cat. Uh, all of the craters that were uh, uh, on the stops were plainly visible. Hopefully they'll be so when we uh, start navigating on the ground. Very good. You were mentioning the boulders and the rays from South Ray. The ray itself, uh, did, could you map out what extent it was, or was it just a whole general area? Uh, it was a pretty r a wide ray uh, coming across here. I would say uh, uh, from it goes from our position uh, perhaps to Spook, and maybe behind us, maybe another 100 meters or so. Very good. How about the left-right extent? Did it go all the way back to South Ray? Well, you'll have to ask John that. Uh, I didn't, couldn't see out that way. Uh, as we, uh, the biggest block that I saw, it, it was one we flew over, which is maybe 100 meters to 200 meters behind us, and it looked uh, like a Volkswagen size. Very good. Uh, John is off calm momentarily. He'll be back up in a little bit. I'm going to start the uh, chow. And, uh, Tony, I wouldn't give you two cents for that orange juice as a hair tonic. It uh, mats it down completely. Well, that might be the point. And we'd like to go your suit gas return back to cabin. Give it a try. Okay, we'll try it in cabin. Uh, we also tried this in orbit, and we got the same sound, Tony. We're going to cabin now, Mark. Okay, it gives us the same sound. Okay, we'd like to go back to egress. Hey, Tony, i tell you what it is. Uh, I just opened the cabin gas return, and it stopped it. What it was is the cabin gas return uh, check valve is not working right. The flow's great now. Our configuration is suit gas diverter push cabin and cabin gas return to open and everything sounds normal. Okay, we'd like to leave you that way. Okay, and if you guys got a suggestion of what meal you want to see, Oh, we're working that one. Okay, uh, uh, I got day five, meal B. Some... I guess we'd like you to just go ahead with your uh, first lunar meal. I guess that deserves some champagne. I don't know. Well, like John said earlier, we definitely not going to get scurvy. Uh, we got so much orange drink here. God. Okay, Tony, we're going to eat uh, day five, meal B. 
Okay, was that uh, dog? Bravo is in boy. Right. Houston, uh, John finally found his spoon. Very good. Hello, Tony, back on com. Tony? Go ahead. Uh, I can't see how far the race. I just assume that this, this uh, block field we're in is from South Race close about. 100 meters out at uh, 10 o'clock, it goes over a ridge and disappears. The next time I see it is at South Ray, which is, uh, you know, pretty far away from here. The South Ray is a doggone interesting crater. I wish we, I wish we could get to it. The, the boulders on the, on the west rim of it are just thick and white as they can be. And in the middle of it, you know, on your map where it looks like it's a depression, there appears to be a uh, a, a brown a, a, a sort of a gray patch of dirt or something that was thrown out of out of that side of it, and then on the north there's another uh, ray of very white boulders coming out of it. And of course we could see the ray pattern long before pitch over it. Uh, 22,000, I was able to get my nose up against the window and see uh, the clue to where we were was South Ray. And because uh, at 22,000, at a 60 degree pitch angle, we couldn't even see Stone Mountain or any of the things to the rear, but you just didn't have any doubt in your mind with that, that big uh, crater. And, and the way the pattern went, you work your way around the pattern. I used the same gouges to find out where we're going to land that we used on the LNA. The uh, inverted V off of Stubby, Cove, and Trap. Stubby uh, wreck and trap that works into uh, uh, Cove, Hidden Valley, and into Spook, and, and from Spook off those small craters into Double Spot. And I think we ended up landing right by one of the smaller craters that sort of, uh, sort of form a uh, hook off the, side, the north side of Spook going back into uh, the double spot, and I think we're about uh, 50 meters from it at 9 o'clock. Very good. How about the Albino? I, I, I can't. How about the Albino tremendous, one? Tremendous difference in Albino on the North Ray is pure white. South Ray is pure white, and it blends into a gray. Uh, and then over here by us, it's uh, almost totally gray. I guess you, you just get the feeling that these rocks may have come from somewhere else. It, there's a big subangular rock that I see at 10 o'clock at uh, no, 11 o'clock at about 100 meters that I would sure like to go over and look because it looks like it's just one big piece of whatever rock it is. All right, I was wondering oh, about... I do have to see a white class at the bottom of it. I was wondering about the albedo on your surface chart, oh, the right. strips and things, whether they, whether the, ray, the rays are as obvious as they are on the high sun angle charts that you're carrying, or whether they look very much different at your low sun angle. Uh, no, they're not, I don't think. I can... Uh, I can see from here down to uh, Survey Ridge, and it is the uh, albedo on there is a little is a lot lighter. It's a general gra a gradual downslope from our landing point to Survey Ridge, and it looks like it drops maybe uh, 100 meters, and then starts to go right back up Smoky Mountain. I guess uh, you can see on the contour map where the low spot is. Okay. But there are some strange looking craters over there on Stone Mountain. And the albedo contrast is really, uh, it's really pronounced in those craters. There's some, uh, and it, it may be a function of shadow. We, we better wait till we get over there. I, I hesitate to say that 
they almost look like big, uh, well, they, they must be impact craters. Okay, I was just wondering about whether you could recognize whether you're on a ray by albedo as well as uh, the boulder content. I think you're going to be able to, but boy, you're not going to pick up a contact. It's just going to, it's, you know, it just fails out into something. Outstanding, that's better than I thought. not be able to work across the contact. But you mainly would do it by the white boulders in the ray, I think. No, I can see uh, on bridge lines from here. I can see three different rays out of South Ray. I believe. I have to go down there and look at them to make sure. They seem to be riding on the ridge lines. So you know, that's probably deceptive because I can't see down in the. I can't see down in the, the holes. Uh, Tony, uh, uh, one other comment from my side. Uh, uh, distances are pretty deceiving here for me. I'm looking out over John's shoulder, and uh, it looks like to me you could uh, throw a rock in a south ray from our present position, which is, uh, I know, impossible. Uh, second comment uh, has to do with the orbital. Since we got so, mo so much look at the ground sailing around, uh, waiting to come down, uh, everywhere that we... Uh, could see everywhere we saw the ground, which is just about the whole sunlit uh, side, uh, in the crater walls and on the ridges, you had to, we had the same lineation that the Apollo 15 photography showed on um, Hadley, uh, Delta and, and Hadley Mountain. Uh, it was really remarkable how in the crater walls primarily and uh, uh, in the ridges, and it gave you the impression that it was a fracture pattern that was all... Uh, uh, trending uh, parallel to the uh, uh, concentric around the uh, craters, in the craters and, uh, and on the ridge, though, it were uh, sort of uh, either parallel to the ground or, uh, or at some dip, uh, be what that may. Over. Okay, very good. And I'm looking out here at Stone Mountain, and I got a picture of it, and it looks like it's got... Uh, Looks like somebody's been out there plowing across the side of it. The, the benches just look like one sort of terrace right after another, right up the side. And they sort of follow the contour of it right around. Any differences uh, in the terraces? No, Tony, totally not, not that I can tell from here. Those terraces could be raised out of stubby or something like that. Okay. You mentioned uh, two different rock types. I can see. I, I can. I can see a stubby has a right at the edge of a stone. Stubby has got much steeper walls going off of uh, of stone mountain than I originally imagined. It. It's. Uh, I don't think stone mountain came up to stubby and stopped. Okay, you think Stubby punched no, into no, the edge? Do y'all have a next? Well, that's my guess from here, but there again, it's, uh, the, the thing is so steep, that uh, the whole side of Stone Mountain right now, from uh, a good half of it, is in shadow. Okay. Go ahead, Charlie. Uh, one thing, you mentioned two rock types, the black and white ones, and then the all white ones. Do you see anything else? Uh, yeah, there was one right out in front of the limb here, just uh, right down at the, just to the right of the foot pad, that uh, looks like a breccia to me, Tony, or uh, either that or an indurated uh, uh, regolith. Uh, we'll tell you when we get out. Okay. Uh, Tony, uh, we'll give you an analogy what that black and white rock looks like. It's really a gray and white, and it looks like a... Uh, a, uh, a granitic rock uh, with uh, very large uh, crystals uh, to it, uh, though I kind of doubt that. Outstanding. You're really wetting our appetites. Well, there's some interesting rocks out here. I see some that are 
pure snow white, and uh, we've got the whole run. We got the whole run of them. And it's hard to tell at this sun, at this sunlight, which is so bright on the on the surface, just exactly what color these things are, even with a naked eye. It, you know, it's very deceptive. I, I swear I see one out there with some pink in it, but we better wait till we get out and we'll pick it up and make sure. Uh, I understand. What do you call tomato soup made with cold water, Tony? Awful. John says cold tomato soup. Hey, Charlie, when you get a chance, could you take a look at that? The ridge at 12 o'clock that you described is 50 to 100 meters out. And see if that continues on around 10 and 9. Yes, it does. Yeah, okay, continue on around my side. Uh, John's original observation was that we, it looked like we're in a big, uh, old subdued crater, and that's really what it looks like, Tony. Okay. Man, those black and white rocks really look interesting, Tony. I just can't wait to grab one of those. Uh, I tell you, Charlie, we feel the same way. In fact, the, in fact, the impression you get is that it's uh, it's almost looks like the color of labradorite. Oh, Charlie. Uh, Tony, I guess it's really a bluish cast that uh, uh, instead of real black to me, but uh, in this sun, it looks bluish. Right, we understand. Well, we'll bring you a small one of each. I'll tell you one thing, I'm glad we brought the rake, because we, we really can do it. Very good. We can get a rake sample out. We can get a rake sample out in front of the, the leader module with one scoop. Okay, and when do you get a chance, we'd like you to stow those hoses. I guess we don't have enough uh, friction in there, and the water separators are running wild. Okay, and if you can pull yourselves away from the window there, uh, we'd like you to hold to the schedule of starting pre-sleep in about 20 minutes. Now, how can we start pre-sleep in 20 minutes when we haven't got the eat yet, Tony? For goodness sake. Okay. Hey, the back room gave you a bravo on your descriptions there. I'm like a little kid on Christmas Eve, Tony. Let me tell you, boy, it really is neat to have a gravity field around to set stuff on. That is really the cat's meow. <laughs> okay, the, the hoses are hooked back up, Tony. Uh, you should see some decrease in the separator. Okay. I think I know how you feel, Charlie. I'm pretty turned on myself. Uh, Tony, how's uh, Casper doing? Say again, Charlie. How is Casper doing? Well, everything's fine up there. I, I just looked over occasionally. You've been keeping me so occupied here, but they've got no problems. Well, you can't imagine how nice this one six gravity is. This is the first time I've been able to eat soup without knowing whether I was going to eat it or take a bath in it. And Tony, John, and I just like to give our thanks to uh, the back room guys and everybody that works so hard on uh, Casper's problem, giving us a chance to get here. Right, Charlie. Yeah. I think everybody around here appreciates their job. Yeah, I'm sure glad somebody was able to come to that conclusion because it sure looked back there for a while, didn't it? You betcha. I'd like to get somebody to put in the words of the big sip soup in the sky and tell it to let's make it a little more nominal from here on out. I'm all for that. That's too much like a sim.
Ryan Houston. Go ahead, Tony. Uh, would you verify that the O2 demand regs are in cabin? Let's verify. Okay, we copy that. It looked like the uh, pressure was dropping down a little bit. And while you're eating there, I might brief you on a couple of things. At about 108 hours, which is about the time you'll be going to bed there, uh, the RCS uh, pressure will build up to the point where you get an RCS light again. And just reset. It's nothing to worry about. And then sometime just before you wake up in the morning, you may very well get a second uh, caution light and alarm uh, when the source pressure, helium source pressure, gets built back up to 1700. And if you go to helium monitor on the temp press gauge there, uh, that'll go away. But there's no way we can inhibit that. Okay, Tony, thank you. Okay. Okay. No worries, we're going to wake up twice tonight already, huh? Yeah, probably. The first one should go off before you get to bed, though. But that second one will probably come on before, or just before you should wake up. Okay. How much, uh, how much sleep from the time when we start the bed do you want us to get? Eight hours. Understand, eight hour rest period. Okay, Tony, uh, uh, we're uh, about to fill the drink bags, and uh, what we're going to do is refill the ones uh, we had uh, this morning and uh, uh, use just with plain water over. Copy that, Tony? Uh, copy that. We're just trying to figure out. I wonder why you're not using the Gatorade. Okay, our orange juice. Well, uh, we drank uh, one bag. At Okay, we drank uh, one bag, uh, the stuff we filled from the command module this morning we drank, and that leaves us with two bags for uh, two subsequent EVAs, and uh, we could fill one of the other bags and just drink water on the third or whatever you want us to do. Oh, we don't care, do whatever you want there, the water's fine. Yeah, I think we'd rather save the... Uh, Fortified stuff till the uh, last. Okay. We understand. Okay, uh, Tony, what's our uh, GET right now? 10731. Okay, uh, what, uh, who do you want on Bioman tonight? Okay, Charlie, it's your turn. That's what I'm afraid of. Okay, uh, you've been looking at me since landing, so, uh, we'll just stay right here. Okay. Okay, while you're worrying about that, your, uh, comm configuration for the night so the S band uh, power amplifier secondary as present. Uh, the telemetry will be low. Voice will be down, voice back up. Range will be off. And as I said, you're on by mid. Okay, uh, start, go through that again. Okay, it's S band power amplifier secondary as present. Uh, telemetry low. Voice will be down, voice back up. Range off, and you're on Biomed. Yeah, right. Okay, you're pretty weak there for a second, Charlie. I'll try it again. Down voice back up, uh, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, over. Okay, that's much better.
Charlie Houston. Go ahead. Okay, uh, at your convenience, I have uh, some changes to your emergency liftoff uh, checklist and the surface checklist. Uh, just give me a call when you're ready to take it. Stand by. Okay, it's in the uh, surface checklist 11-1. Okay, you speak. Okay, on the things activation, it's uh, down on the bottom left-hand side. The last uh, entry there is crow, and hold until standby, light off, uh, cross that line out. And add the line underneath, CB, a circuit breaker, panel 11, LGC, slash disky, dash, close. Okay, go ahead. Okay, on the second column. Yeah, I have a correction to the checklist. It says circuit breaker 16, uh, circuit breaker panel 16, inverter 1 closed. That should read circuit breaker panel 11, inverter 1 closed. And then we'd like to insert. Okay, got it. Okay, and we'd like to insert underneath that line, circuit breaker panel 16, inverter 2 closed, and inverter switch to 2. Okay, inverter to two and cross out inverter one. Right. Okay, on 11-2. Underneath, uh, you, on the left-hand upper side, you have, you have asterisk, CB, 11 and 16. Underneath that line, write in T, ephemeris, update. If available from this then. Okay, is that an uplink or do we load? Stand by. Okay, Tony, uh, John thinks it's first 25, 907, enter 1706, enter, and then don't load the ephemeris. And uh, I think that's correct. Roger, Charlie, that's correct. Okay, go ahead. Any other uh, words? Right. On, uh, I've got on your circuit breaker configuration here, I've got uh, some that'll be open, and you might as well note that they will be open, and that's okay. So on 11-3. Panel 11, first, uh, ca uh, first line there, S-band antenna will be open. Keep going. Okay, and on 11 and dash 4, fourth line, panel 16, S-band antenna will be open. Okay, go ahead. Okay, we go on to 11 dash 6 now. Uh, you have the setup for your uh, shearable antenna, and you can just cross all that out, and that's the end of it. Okay, we copy uh, all of those updates. Uh, the only one I don't understand is uh, on 11-1, on the pigs activation, uh, right uh, we crossed out the pro and added LDC disky closed, and right before that it says LDC disky closed.
Okay, you're right. That's an error on our part. Uh, just uh, cancel out our addition. Oh, okay, no problem. Uh, just thought maybe something went by me there. Right. Uh, okay, Tony, if that's everything, we're ready to go to bed. Good show. Okay, uh, we're through with everything here, and uh, we're all set to, to let you go to bed. You're going to bed, uh, I'll have you know, a whole uh, six minutes early. I guess the government can allow you to have that time off. Okay, uh, I'll be on top. John will be off top. And uh, we're going to turn off the lights now. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. We're sure looking forward to it. Hey, so are we. Guess what, you turn all the lights off and it doesn't get dark. Daylight outside. Okay, Tony, uh, one final word. Uh, our ECS configuration for sleep is uh, push cabin, cabin gas return in auto, and the rest of the thing is uh, advertised. Over. Our correction, cabin gas return open. Okay, that looks good here. Okay, Tony, we'd like to thank everybody for uh, the great job of regrouping and then uh, uh, getting back to what uh, seems to be pretty nominal from now on. Uh, and uh, we'll see you in the morning. I guess you give us a, a reveille call uh, over the support box here, over. Okay, I'll sure do that. I'll come in and uh, I'll whistle something here. All right. Good night. Good night. Houston, uh, Orion. Go ahead, Tony. Well, I guess I can't stop talking. Uh, one final observation, Tony, is that uh, due to the lack of uh, dust and, uh, that we had uh, on landing and the fact that we can see uh, blocks embedded in the side of these craters here, I kind of got the distinct impression that the regular is not too thick around here, and uh, we ought to maybe uh, think about what would be the thickest place in order to get the drill in, over. Okay, that's good observation. From the films you've seen of other descents, do you think the dust is less than any of the others? Well, John will have to really comment on that, but I, as far as uh, my side goes, uh, the little I looked out, that was by far, we could see, uh, or I could, on my side, see right on down through it for touchdown. Okay, and from your uh, listening to your descent, it sounded like you picked it up about 90 feet. Uh, a little bit less than that is about 80, maybe uh, 75. I feeling you and I could just sit up all night and talk about this. Well, that's all you're going to hear from me. Good night. <laughs> okay, good night. This is Apollo Control at 107 hours, 59 minutes. And at this point, we have caught up with all of the backlog of tape that was accumulated during the uh, change of shift press briefing. and. Uh, which continued to pile up on us as we were replaying the tape that we'd already accumulated. Uh, we are up to date now and uh, are standing by live. And uh, we believe that third good night, uh, or at least hope that third good night, uh, was the final one. Uh, we don't expect to hear from the crew now for about eight hours uh, aboard Orion. Uh, we are in contact uh, with Ken Mattingly uh, aboard the orbiting uh, command module, command and service module Casper. And uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be picking that up uh, and standing by until uh, Ken Mattingly uh, completes, uh, completes this revolution and goes behind the moon. And we expect he also, uh, before much longer, will be beginning a rest period. Uh, based on the uh, data received from the lunar module 
guidance and navigation system during the uh, landing, uh, we have come up with a set of uh, landing coordinates which agree very closely with the uh, estimation that uh, John Young gave of the uh, spacecraft's position. Uh, our uh, coordinates uh, from the calculations here on the ground uh, show the lunar module Orion to be located uh, about 430 feet west and about 900 feet north of the planned uh, target point. Uh, if I remember correctly, Young estimated that uh, they had come down about uh, 200 meters west and about 100 meters north of a crater very near the landing site. And uh, that crater uh, was double spot crater, which is uh, just slightly to the south and west of the LEM site. Uh, so uh, the, the two numbers would be very comparable. Uh, the numbers that I gave, the 430 feet west and 900 feet north, are with respect to the landing site. Uh, the numbers that Young used, uh, his estimate was 200 feet, or 200 meters rather, uh, west of uh, Double Spot Crater and uh, 100 meters north, which uh, is about the same location as best we can tell as uh, that we have computed. The coordinates of this uh, landing point uh, would be 8 degrees 59 minutes and 13.2 seconds south and 15 degrees uh, 30 minutes 48.6 uh, seconds east. Now we do expect that these uh, coordinates will be updated uh, particularly if Ken Mattingly is able to get uh, some tracking data from orbit uh, using the CSM sextant. Uh, he plans to try to take some landmark sightings uh, on the landing site. And we'll also get an additional fix based on uh, crew observations uh, once they get out and uh, uh, get a chance to look in a little more detail at the surrounding landscape. At this point, uh, we'll switch over to our second air-to-ground line and uh, stand by for uh, uh, any conversation with Ken Mattingly uh, aboard the orbiting command module Casper. Yeah, here comes our old friend Langrenus. Okay, Ken, that's, uh, we need barber pole yeah, plus four. a little barber pole, don't you? Okay, that should be one plus what we have. Astronaut uh, Stu Rusa is serving as spacecraft communicator uh, for the command module. Our uh, spacecraft communicator for the LEM is uh, astronaut Don Peterson. Hey Stu, if I put uh, 30 frames on this uh, crochet, I won't get that first strip of uh Cont Andel. Um, you think about uh, doing away with the intervalometer and taking the pictures with less overlap and trying to squeeze it all into this one mag. Okay, uh, stand by. Let's take a look at that, Ken. Okay, I got a couple of minutes before I start. Okay. Okay, uh, Ken, you can go ahead and uh, disregard the intervalometer and uh, try to get them both on that same mag. Okay, thank you very much. I'm all set up. Uh, come up on Crossier. Okay.
Bell, it looks like I ran out anyhow. I got 165 and the magazine's empty and I just finished the strip of Crozier. Okay, I copy that. That's on magazine November, November. Okay. And I'll go see if I can get Papa Papa out here real fast. Okay, Papa Papa is out and loaded. I'll try to pick up Descartes to Mdale with him. Uh, Roger. This is Apollo Control at 108 hours, 21 minutes. Uh, we have heard no, uh, uh, heard nothing further from the uh, crew aboard uh, the Lunar Module Orion, uh, Charlie Duke and John Young, uh, since we last said good night. But uh, uh, we do have about uh, 40 minutes of acquisition time left with the command module, uh, Casper, which is presently in an orbit. Uh, 66.8 nautical miles by 53 nautical miles. And occasionally we're getting uh, uh, bits and pieces uh, drifting through the communications of what uh, sounds like uh, martial music that uh, Ken Mattingly is uh, playing on the uh, uh, onboard tape recorder. And as the level reaches a high enough point, it's triggering his uh, box, the voice-operated relay, in the communication system, and we'll get a snatch of it here and there. Mattingly, at the present time, is uh, getting caught up on to his uh, normal uh, flight plan, and uh, we expect that he will be caught up by about uh, 109 hours, 30 minutes, at which time he's scheduled to begin an eight-and-a-half-hour rest period. At the present time, he's involved in... Uh, keeping the sim bay operating and uh, taking a series of uh, photographs. And at about uh, 109 hours, 17 minutes, uh, he's scheduled to start in on the pre-sleep checklist. Uh, we'll continue to uh, stand by live uh, for conversation between Ken Mattingly and uh, Capcom Stu Russo. Uh, we'll be in a record mode for uh, any conversations with the lunar module, and we'll play those back uh, following their uh, receipt, uh, should we hear anything from Young or Duke uh, aboard the lunar module. Well, 
I tell you what, I'm going to have to skip to the mess. The uh, Terminator is still on the rim. Okay. Just for kicks, so I'm going to show you one on frame SS that is uh, really fascinating. And I'm just on the eastern rim of Ptolemaeus. I just mentioned it last time. I'm going to take a little strip of these. And see if I can get that on. That'll be good enough. Okay, I took... Uh, I took it up to 20 frames that I used. That's about five of these on SS. And uh, what I took it of was that this uh, material that's on the eastern rim of Ptolemaeus has the same textural appearance in the low that we saw at the, in the uh, Descartes formation, that being the stuff coming from the crater Descartes and running north uh, yesterday. It had an entirely different appearance than the rest of the terrain in the low sun. I think there may be some interesting comparison there. Okay, Ken, uh, got that. And you're approaching uh, 30 seconds. Okay, to... i got to end up a uh, pan camera off here somewhere. All right, your, uh, my mark, you'll be uh, 25 seconds, Mark. And Ken, uh, just turn the cameras off there, then uh, before you continue on with those steps, I want to say uh, something about those uh, procedures on down to bottom. I'm showing uh, six, seven seconds. Okay. And Mark, I show T-stop. That's for pan camera and mapping camera. Okay, there's standby and off. I'll wait 30 seconds before I take the image motion off. Hey, thank you, Stu. That was a big help. Raj, and uh, I would, uh, we're going to delete on those uh, procedures there, the mapping camera retract and the mapping camera laser altimeter cover close. We're going to leave those out all night, and we'll have a uh, plan tomorrow on how we're going to handle the mapping camera. Okay, uh, you do want the laser off, though, is that correct? That's affirmative. Okay, the laser is off now, the mapping camera is going to standby, and the image motion is coming off. Jolly good. And Ken, a couple other items. Uh, we're going to let the uh, bad A charge all night, so uh, we'll just leave that as is. Okay, those uh, batteries kind of put in a day's work too today. Raj. Okay, I see that we're going to have AOS on the next pass before we get, uh, before the sleep period starts, so uh, I think I'll wait and give you my film summary at uh, AOS, if that's okay. It'll take me that long to sort it all out, I'm afraid. That's uh, okay, Ken. All I was planning to give you was how much is left in each mag. Say again, Ken. All I was planning to give you, Stu, was uh, how much is left in each magazine. Hey, that's, that's jolly. And Jeff for Houston. Okay. Okay, I got a couple of things. Uh, Ken, one is uh, we would like to delete that film status report. Uh, we would like for you to uh, start your rest period just as soon as you can after LOS and let us pick up uh, any talking about the film or anything like that for tomorrow. Oh, very well. Uh, an Boss. And another thing, uh, we're noticing uh, in indications here that uh, your screens, your uh, on your uh, O2 return hoses and also the suit circuit return valve. You might take a look at those tonight and uh, see if they need a little cleaning. Okay, I've been cleaning the uh, suit circuit return screen every night and it's been getting pretty dirty, so I'll check it again today. And the uh, other hoses, I've got a, 
since I didn't have a screen for the inlets, I capped the inlets and uh, just used the outlets to keep stuff from... Uh, we got so much junk here, I didn't want to get stuff inside the hoses down through the suit fans and to clog up the other filters. Okay. So I put the, uh, the uh, interconnects on the inlets and just let the air blow out of the hoses and take it all in through the suit circuit return. That might give you a little higher uh, pressure rise. Okay, uh, we, we concur with the configuration, and but we have noticed the O2 flow creeping up slowly, indicating that uh, we probably need a little uh, house cleaning on that screen. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I'll catch that, baby. Okay. I tell you, this is... Okay. A man shouldn't get paid for doing this. Yeah, it really sounds great, Ken. I think, uh, I think the difference in the... Uh, Earth pressing sure must have made a difference the way you're talking to their shine versus uh, the way I saw it. Oh, it's fantastic. You can see the whole thing. It's really something. I'm going to try to, that's reason I wanted to try and get these earth shine pictures in this time before the earth gets any smaller. Because it really isn't nearly as dramatic tonight as it was last night. And I don't know if that's the altitude or what. But if I, uh, let's see, we want to run these booms out, and what else? Uh, i got to turn the pan camera on. Okay, if you'll give me a call on those. Roger, I'm, I'm watching for you on the uh, boom deploy, Ken. Uh, you got uh, a little less than five minutes. Okay. Um, you know, something else that I'm not real sure about, it sure looks to me as though the earth shine is not as bright on this Mari, I guess it's just this Mari that's uh, over around Framaro and so forth is just darker. And maybe it's my night adaptation that hasn't taken effect yet. But I got the distinct impression that uh, it's a lot brighter when you get over to the western limb. Okay, I uh, got that, Ken. I don't think I understand that. <laughs> I tell you, I thought this was kind of appropriate here a few minutes ago. I was playing Berlioz uh, Symphony Fantastique and looking at this fantastic sight and floating along here. and It's just unbelievable. It's so much fun. Yeah, it sure sounds like it. In fact, we were catching a little of your uh, music occasionally there. Didn't sound as good as riding old paint, but I guess uh, it'll do. <laughs> well, I've been listening to the old paint kind of music uh, for three days of PTC. But it was good old paint. I'll have to admit. I enjoyed it. And Casper Houston. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, what, what we'd like to do now, Ken, is go ahead and put out the booms now. And uh, as soon as you have them out, go ahead and start the uh, start your P20 uh, running right now. It looks like we might be cramped a little bit to get your uplinks in. And we want to make sure that we get uh, all of the uplinks completed here. Okay, in other words, you want me to cancel uh, the earth shine? Yeah, I, uh, that's what we're saying, Ken. Uh, we just... Uh, Afraid we might be cutting it kind of okay. tight on the uplink. All right, that's in work. Okay. Okay, Ken, and we can take the uh, pan camera power to uh, off. The lens is dope. Okay. Fan camera power is off. Okay. Okay, and I guess I might as well go ahead and put the booms out, haven't I? Uh, Raj, we'd, uh, we'd like to have those out. And uh, as soon as you complete that, let's go ahead and do the uh, go into the P20 that we're showing at 108 plus 50. Let's don't wait for that. Okay, I'm already going there. Oh, okay. 
I'm doing a manual roll to, to get over there and uh, spin it around. Okay, very good. And uh, I guess I'd like to have a uh, sim bay configuration. What, what you think I should have at the end of the, when I get ready to go to bed, what mechanical and electrical status? And let me cross-check it to make sure I haven't forgotten something. Okay, uh, we, we'll get that for you. Casper Houston, we've got that Simbay configuration uh, when you're ready. Okay, go ahead. Okay, it is your uh, normal sleep configuration with a change in the first digit of the top line. We're going to change that zero to a one. You will now have a configuration minus one, 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 one. Second line is normal, zero, one, two, two, two. Okay, minus all ones, zero, one, two, two, two. Thank you, sir. Raj, and we'd like... Follow the inlet screens, and you're right there. Go ahead. Okay, I, I copied your, your bid on the screens, and uh, we'd like BD roll for sleep tonight. Okay, you'd like to go to BD roll. Okay. How does the uh, general RCS picture look? Uh, we're in uh, we're in good shape, uh, Ken. We're down uh, a little on the flight plan, uh, but uh, we're riding 168 above the uh, the red line. We're on the flight plan. We're down to minus one three three. Okay. And expensive afternoon. It'll all get done. Uh, you're doing a great job, Ken. I am just real sorry about that delay this afternoon. I wish I'd known more about it. I had already decided that if it was if it was just uh, oscillatory and, and stable, I was going to take it. Yeah, well, I tell you, the uh, the traces on those uh, up to the time that you turned off the gimbal motors were just a classic divergent curve right out of the textbook. believe it when I saw that thing. I was back in Pletty Simulator. Yeah, I think there's been a lot of people talking about uh, SimSuit today. Or should we just uh, forget this one? <laughs> but, uh, hey, I got a couple other reminders here uh, while we're chatting. Uh, I'd like to remind you on your pre-sleep checklist that we'll not bump up the cabin tonight. Okay, thank you. And Ken, a couple other, uh, or one other item here, uh, you might get a leg up on your pre-sleep checklist and uh, check the optics power off uh, at your convenience. Okay, I'll uh, get that stuff in just a minute. Okay. I wasn't trying to hurry, I just wanted to uh, toss in a little reminder there. Yeah, thank you. I think I left it on last night. That isn't what I was trying to say, Ken. <laughs> well, you know what was going on last night and this morning. <laughs> Everything you said was true. I got a garbage can in here that's bigger than me. Yeah, Raj. And we'd like to have Omni Charlie now, uh, Ken, and when you get the attitude, you can uh, reacquire with the high gain. Okay. Hey, that is better. Hey, uh, Stu, I kind of turned... Uh, Hank off this morning when he tried to give us a, a simple status report because it just wasn't uh, this morning wasn't a convenient time but uh, 
I'd be very happy to, to hear one of those tomorrow and see what people are finding out. Okay, we'll give you a, a good one uh, tomorrow. Okay, Ken, uh, just at this appearance, it appears that everything is uh, swinging along all right with them, but uh, we'll have a good scientific uh, readout on it tomorrow. That's something about a uh, about the uh, clock update. We're gonna do that tomorrow or tonight. Uh, that'll be done tomorrow, Ken. What we uh, really like oh, for you to do is uh, get to uh, get to resting, go into your sleep period just as soon as you can. Here, <laughs> Raj, I'm working on the free sleep checklist now. Okay. Casper, Houston, would you give us a high gain uh, just as soon as you can and go accept? Okay, uh, Casper, if you'd give us wide beam width and accept, please. For about a minute and a half from LOS. Okay, you got to accept. You want uh, wide and auto or what the uh, high gain? Roger, that's wide and auto, uh, Ken. Okay, uh, Ken, if you can read, we'd like for you to go back to block and load uh, your jet monitor uh, routine uh, manually. nine hours, two minutes. Uh, we've had uh, loss of radio contact now with Apollo 16 uh, Casper as the spacecraft uh, went around the corner on its uh, 18th revolution. And when we reacquire in about uh, 45 minutes, uh, Ken Mattingly should either be uh, in his sleep period or about to uh, begin. Uh, we last uh, heard from uh, the crew aboard Orion on the lunar surface at 107 hours 53 minutes uh, or a little over an hour ago and uh, they should be in the midst of an eight hour uh, sleep period at this time. We have uh, an additional update to the uh, landing coordinates for Orion uh, based on the crew's uh, out-the-window observations and the report of the terrain features that they were able to see out the window. Our best estimate now is that uh, their actual landing site, uh, landing point is 656 feet west of the target point and 459 feet north. At 109 hours, 3 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 109 hours, uh, 47 minutes into the mission. Uh, we have just acquired uh, data on uh, CASPER, now on its uh, 19th revolution around the uh, moon. Meanwhile, in the Mission Control Center, we have had a, a shift uh, handover. Flight Director uh, Gene Krantz and uh, his uh, white team of uh, flight controllers uh, now manning the consoles here in Mission Control. Uh, we will uh, leave the line up on this uh, front side pass of Caster, uh, Casper. And at uh, 109 hours, uh, 48 minutes, uh, continuing to monitor, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Go ahead, Casper. Houston, Casper. 
Go ahead, Casper. Go ahead, Casper. This is Houston. Casper, Houston, how do you read now? Well, I'm cleared on. Okay. Okay, I'm ready to give you accept. Okay. Go accept. We're ready to have Blake. Okay, standing by. And I'd like to verify the uh, cryo configuration with you. And uh, make sure that I'm leaving battery A on charge overnight. There's no lithium canister change tonight. And it looks like when you get the uplink in, I give you a... Uh, Verb 74 will be true. I believe that's right. Stand by one. Casper Houston. The, uh, we concur with battery A. We'll stay on charge all night. There's no LIOH change. And on the cryo configuration, the O2 and H2 tanks 1 and 2 auto, tanks 3 off. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 109 hours, uh, 53 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, our uh, CAPCOM uh, here in Mission Control uh, is uh, astronaut Don Peterson. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Phil Schaffer is uh, heading up the uh, team of uh, flight controllers who are working with uh, Casper. Casper, Houston, we need an EMOD, then uh, you can turn in for the night. Roger. Okay, Casper, uh, we recommend you go BD roll, and that winds it up. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, Don, I guess that's it. I'll see you folks tomorrow. Okay, doke, Casper. Pleasant dreams. Somebody to get a shift like this. Say again, Kessler. You must know somebody to end up with a shift like this. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. Well, I don't have lots of coffee in here. Good night. Good night. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 110 hours, uh, one minute. Uh, ground elapsed time. That uh, was Don Peterson and Ken Mattingly uh, conversing there, and Command Module Pilot Mattingly uh, got his uh, turn-in call for the night. Uh, however, we will uh, continue to keep the uh, line up live in the event uh, we should hear any further conversations uh, with Ken Mattingly aboard uh, the Command Module Casper. We're at uh, 110 hours, 2 minutes of ground elapsed time. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. It's Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 110 hours, uh, 21 minutes ground elapsed time. Uh, the uh, flight surgeon here in Mission Control uh, just reported over the flight director's loop that uh, Ken Mattingly... Uh, aboard the uh, Casper spacecraft has just dropped off to sleep. We're at uh, 110 hours, uh, 22 minutes into the mission and uh, continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 110 hours, uh, 58 minutes uh, into the mission. Uh, we've had uh, loss of signal with the uh, spacecraft Casper, as Casper is passing now around the backside of the moon on its uh, 19th revolution. As we reported earlier, uh, Command Module Pilot Ken Mattingly uh, appears to be sleeping. Uh, 
dozing off to sleep uh, shortly after he was given the go-ahead to start his rest period. Meanwhile, in the Mission Control Center, the uh, flight control team uh, is uh, studying the various options uh, for the lunar, lunar surface activity ahead and lunar orbit operations. And uh, we would expect at least a first cut on a uh, flight plan update before the end of this shift. We now show uh, four hours and uh, 54 minutes of time remaining uh, before the uh, crew aboard Orion, uh, before John Young and Charles Duke uh, get their wake-up call. We're at uh, 110 hours, uh, 59 minutes into the flight, and uh, this is Apollo Controlled Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 111 hours of uh, four minutes into the mission. As the uh, spacecraft uh, Casper passes above the uh, backside of the moon on its uh, 19th revolution, uh, we read uh, its uh, orbital parameters at uh, 67 nautical miles by 53 nautical miles. We're at uh, 111 hours, five minutes, ground elapsed time, and this is Apollo Control Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 111 hours uh, 46 minutes into the mission of Apollo 16. We uh, are now acquiring data on the uh, spacecraft Casper as it uh, comes around the uh, front side of the moon on its 20th revolution. We presently show an orbit uh, for the command module Casper at 67 nautical miles by 53 nautical miles. Command module pilot uh, Ken Mattingly, uh, like the uh, two lunar module pilots, uh, is in his rest period. Uh, we'll stand by, however, and continue to monitor in the event uh, any conversation should take place. We now show uh, John Young and Charles Duke uh, having uh, four hours and six minutes of time remaining before their wake-up call. We're at uh, 111 hours, uh, 47 minutes, continuing to monitor, and uh, this is Apollo Controlled Houston. This is Apollo Controlled Houston at uh, 112 hours, uh, 42 minutes into the mission. Uh, we just picked up a uh, short conversation uh, between uh, Charlie Duke aboard uh, the uh, lunar module Orion and Capcom Don Peterson. Uh, we'll play that conversation for you now. Hello, Orion. Over. Hello, Houston. Go ahead. So we had a little MA RCS like information out about 10 to 15 percent quantity. Is that what you guys were expecting on? That's for you. Okay, I'll have the two and a half hours to go back to sleep. Say again, Charlie, you're very gullible. from his sleep uh, aboard Orion. He uh, had, had noted uh, 
an RCS uh, pressure light on, uh, double-checked with mission control to see if the uh, uh, 15% uh, was a proper number or a, an anticipated number. Uh, Don Peterson, uh, the CAPCOM, uh, uh, checked uh, uh, with the uh, f flight control team here and responded, uh, yes, it was what we expected. Uh, we're at uh, 112 hours, uh, 45 minutes into the flight of Apollo 16. Uh, we show uh, three hours, uh, seven minutes until official time of wake up uh, for the crew aboard Orion. And uh, this is Apollo Control Houston uh, continuing to monitor.